For many years, it was the Mammoth Albany game that would often decide a conference championship. These days, it provides an old-fashioned non-conference showdown. September football, Jersey Shore style, next on ESPN. Crazy to say, it is week three of the college football season with Eddie Acapinti. I'm Matt Harmon. Partner, you look at these teams today. They are often familiar with each other going back to the days of the Northeast Conference. Well, Matt, like you said in our open, these two teams, when they met a lot of times, a conference championship was indeed at stake. They played some old school wars back in the Northeast Conference days. Albany got the better of Monmouth as they were transitioning into now the CAA. Monmouth has found a home in the Big South and they have championship aspirations in that league now. Both of these teams coming into today's game at one and one and both have kind of taken similar paths. An FBS loss in week number one and FCS win last week and both teams kind of do it the old fashioned way. Love to run the football. Well, they're going to do their offensive damage, Matt, on the ground and these two backfields have versatility and they have dangerous game breakers. Albany, one of the leading teams in the CAA running the football, they're gonna throw Carl Mofer, who is more of that big bruising back, and Alex James, the speedster at you. They can beat you on the ground in so many different ways. For Mammoth, same kind of idea, a little bit of the thunder and lightning mix up between Pete Guerrero and Devell Jones. And Guerrero's really developed now as that Mammoth bell cow running back over 100 yards in each of the team's first two games. The Big South's leading rusher at almost 130 yards per game, while Devell Jones, the short yardage goal line guy, had a huge fourth down conversion in Mammoth's win last week. Both will like to run the football, both looking to pick up a very important second win of the season. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we've got the starting lineup for you. We've got the opening kickoff. Settle in. Should be a good one between Mammoth and Albany. I want it. I can't believe it. That cow brought his karaoke machine. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. No, Kevin. No, Kevin. No, no. Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Boom boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bon boy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences. Rewards reimagined. Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. A very nice September afternoon here in West Long Branch, New Jersey, about a mile off the Atlantic Ocean. We are set and ready for week number three for both the Great Danes of Albany under the direction of Greg Gattuso here in a six year here with Albany. 1983 graduate of Penn State helped win a national championship for Joe Paterno back in 1982. On the flip side, Kevin Callahan, who continues to be the one and only head coach in Monmouth history. His 27th year here took his team to the FCS playoffs a couple of seasons ago for the first time in school history. It will be Monmouth who will receive the opening kickoff. They are in the dark blue jerseys, the silver helmets, 
and the white pants for Albany. The white jerseys today with the purple numerals, the gold outline, the gold helmets today, and the gold pants. Looking forward to this one. Good to be back with you here on a Saturday afternoon with Eddie Acapinti. I'm Matt Harmon. It'll be Dylan Burns, number 19, the Great Dane kicker, the redshirt junior out of Massapequa, New York, to get this one up and going. And right on cue, the ball falling off the tee. Well, something we'll keep an eye on is indeed that wind. It made the ball fall off the tee. And Matt, when you and I were walking around the field before you were over the beach this morning about a mile away, you said it. It's a windy afternoon. We'll keep an eye on that wind here at Kessler Stadium. Back deep for Monmouth. Matt Castronova and Lonnie Moore, the fourth. Moore will have the first opportunity, 20-25. And then wrapped up at the 26, maybe the 27-yard line. Here comes the Mammoth offense, which a week ago had 24 points in the win over Lafayette. It will be Kenji Bahar, the fifth-year senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. You see his number is Eddie from a week ago. Uh, he was good but not great, I think, last week. Had some, some maybe some issues just finding that normal rhythm that he usually does. A lower than normal completion percentage so far this season for Bahar, who's under 60%. But that interception that you saw he threw against Lafayette, quick to point out, that wasn't his fault. That was a defensive back ripping it away from one of his receivers. They want to get him going early, and he'll flip it to the near sideline for Joey Alderelli, the junior out of nearby Oakhurst, New Jersey, he has the reception and a first down, a gain of about 13. Easy completions, right? You want to get your quarterback in rhythm early. Alderelli has really developed into kind of a go-to receiver for Kenji Bahar, but look for those easy completions near the line of scrimmage to start to get into some kind of rhythm. Alderelli into double figures now in catches. He's got 10 in the year. You see the motion man, that's the H-back, Sean Clark. Bobbled snap, and Bahar will have to go to a knee to get it. That will lose five, set up second and 15. And winning on first down partner is going to be huge for Monmouth in this game because when these two teams last met, and I know it was a couple of years ago, hey, Albany really manhandled Monmouth up front, and they won that game up in Albany at the point of attack. It's going to be key for Monmouth. You looked on that play like they were trying to get Guerrero going, so that's something to keep an eye on as well is the battle in the trenches. This is the 17th time these teams have played. Guerrero will get the carry, bounce off a couple of tacklers, keep his feet off the right side, turn something out of nothing, and get about five, third and 10. Here's a look at that Mammoth starting offense under the direction, as we said, of Bahar Guerrero. Big week last week. He's the reigning Big South Offensive Player of the Week. Lonnie Moore, Joey Alderelli, Terrence Green Jr. It's brought to you by Sunbelt Rentals. One change in that starting lineup. Uh, it is Charles James, Eddie, today that starts at the left guard. And we just mentioned how important the trenches are and James being thrown right into the fire against a pretty physical Albany front line. Bahar, little shovel pass forward. Guerrero cannot hang on to it. He did have some room in front of him. Mammoth here will, after a first down, have to punt it away. You'll see the pocket collapses pretty quickly, and Kenji Bahar thinking there with that left-handed shovel pass kind of pushed it right at Guerrero. Had he caught it, he would have had an opportunity, Matt. There was some blocking downfield. The receivers had already kind of walled their guys up, but you could see Albany that time got pressure on Kenji Bahar. It messed that whole drive up for Mammoth. That's a great stand for the Great Danes early. Colin McCreary, who averages about 46 per kick, his first one of the day, it goes to Donovan McDonald, who gets wrapped up quickly. Tackled down the field by the tight end special teamer, Gene Scott, out of Wall. We'll get a change of possession here and a look at the Albany offense. They like this guy. Look at the size of Jeff Undercuffler, 6'5", Eddie, 2 31. That's a big quarterback. Big quarterback, Matt. He's their sixth starting quarterback in the last six seasons. But when you talk to folks around the Albany program, they feel like they found their guy. And you mentioned it, a big physical quarterback from right here in New Jersey. Good start to his career. Has thrown four touchdowns through Albany's first two games. Has not yet been intercepted. Out of the shotgun here. Strong arm, good throw. Catch is made by Jawan Green the six-foot senior, formerly of Lackawanna Community College. 
Jones part of a pretty good receiving core that includes Reeves and Deb Holmes up front. Keep an eye on Nico Cullen. He is a big force at that center, 303 pounds. And although it's Carl Mofer that gets a start in the backfield, it's Alex James, who is the co-CAA Offensive Player of the Week. Both of these teams will rotate running backs in, and the combination of Mofer and James has been a devastating one early for Albany. Both put up massive numbers a week ago. This is James stretching it out to the left side. Goes inside out. He'll have 11 and a first down for Albany. And if you're Albany, Alex James is that difference maker. The transfer from Coastal Carolina is the home run hitter. He and Guerrero, similar skill sets. James a little bit bigger. Look at the hole he has to run through on that left side. Makes Hassan Chambers miss, and then he gets first down yardage. We mentioned it, Matt, on the first drive. Whoever wins this game up front will most likely win this game on the scoreboard. About 12 carries for 229 yards a week ago with a touchdown against Bryant. Co-CAA Player of the Week in Alex James. Pass to the outside is dropped by the sophomore, Des Holmes. And Holmes looks like he heard footsteps on the outside there. Took his eye off the ball before he started running. It, James, you mentioned it, averaging 15 yards a carry on the season. That's the defense that will be tasked with stopping him. Good start to this season for Eric Massey, Matt. And I know Mom, it's still working through things on the back end defensively. Yeah, they've got a couple of players nicked up. We'll keep an eye on that. Their corner is expected to be very good in Justin Terry and Tymir Berry. Two veteran guys back from the last couple of years. On second and 10, emptying the backfield, going to the far sideline. It's hauled in by Green, who's got another catch, and he will get Albany seven on that second down reception, bring up third and three. Easy completions right now for Jeff Undercuffler. He's allowed to stand tall in the pocket and deliver throws. We saw him hit one for a first down. That one was short of the sticks, but he looks the part, doesn't he? Now he's gonna go to the sideline partner as they get a little fancy. They'll mix things up here on third and three. Draw play. Right back up the middle, first down coming. That is Ja Dabney, a freshman out of Somerset, New Jersey. Went to Franklin High School. Basically a Wildcat type look here on a quarterback draw. He's actually listed on the roster as a quarterback running back combination. That's his seventh carry of the year. He does get good first down yardage. That's Mamet's Nick Shoemaker down on the turf after the play. Shoemaker to be tended to. Good opening drive so far for Albany. And you do wonder here just a little bit, Eddie, if you are this Mammoth team. You know, you think back to this series, and these teams played some great games when they were both members of the Northeast Conference. It's a rivalry that started back in 1998. Great Danes won the first four, check it, the first five, then Mammoth four in a row. Uh, and since 2006, it's been all Albany, including the game you referenced a couple years ago when these teams played in 17. Yeah, and that was a game after Albany made that transition to the CAA. You and I were there. They looked bigger, stronger than they were when they were in the NEC. And the, the rivalry, Matt, that we referenced in the beginning of our broadcast, it really happened because it seemed for a good five, six, seven years that whenever these teams played in the NEC, it was a champion that came out of that game. And Monmouth did have a great championship run in the mid to late 2000s, but Albany kind of started and ended the rivalry with punctuating wins as Shoemaker up and able to get off the field under his own power. Back to the traditional quarterback here for Albany in undercuffler. West Nesky, the H-back. Here's the draw play set up for Mofor. Mamet had him wrapped up in the backfield for what would have been two, three yard loss. And Carl Mofor, the junior, will get about three moving forward. Well, if you think you have Carl Mofor wrapped up, you probably don't. 5'8, 230, and he is a load to tackle. You can see there's dragging tacklers. Matt got a very big lower base, and he is not a thrill to tackle. Similar to on the other side, what Mammoth can throw out with Devell Jones, who's a bit of a taller player, but similarly built. Three receiver set, undercuffler, pumps, goes to the end zone, has a man open, and it's dropped. 
Green had the step on Justin Terry, who was beaten in coverage. The pump action worked. Albany missing a chance at six. Oh, now Green slow to get up, but he flat out dropped a beautifully thrown touchdown. Under Cuffler singled up. You could see in the near shot that was Reeves signaling touchdown, but his wide receiver mate let him down. Can't throw it any better. It's a drop, and hopefully Green is okay. But that's the first big play miss in this game, Matt. And how good is Undercuffler look, by the way? He is in rhythm, hitting the back foot and letting it go downfield. Mammoth defense under siege early. We mentioned a couple of issues at the corner spot. Tymir Berry, the fifth-year senior, is not in the game right now for Mammoth. Eddie Morales has taken over one corner spot, and the Hawks have brought an extra defensive back in in Matt Castronova. Third and a long six. Here comes pressure. Undercuffler hangs in the pocket, goes off the left side. Fighting for yardage, cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. That should go as a sack. Evan Powell among those on the tackle. Well, initially, there's time for Undercuffler to throw there, but no one's open downfield. And he lost the ball. They didn't necessarily call incomplete pass, which means that was a fumble technically. And after a couple of first downs, Mammoth's defense settled in a bit, and there's Massey again. He's really come on, and Mammoth has struggled to get pressure, but he's having a good start to the season. High end over end punt called for and made a fair catch is Morales. Mammoth will get it for the second time tonight at the 16-yard line. Great Danes had a chance at six. Missed opportunity. See if it comes back to bite him. Scoreless here, still in the early stages of the first quarter, 9-23 with Eddie Acapinti. I'm Matt Harmon. Mammoth will get it for the second time today. It has become breezy out of the south, which means it's coming from the ocean 10 to 20 miles an hour, right around 75 degrees. That won't be an issue, and uh, nothing in the forecast for potential rain. Good throw over the middle, and it's hauled in by Alderelli. That's the strong arm, Eddie, of Kenji Bahar. He can, when he's sharp, put it on a dime. Well, when he's got time to throw the football and he's in rhythm, that's what Kenji Bahar can do. Haven't seen him go downfield a whole lot early this season, but that was a great throw. Guerrero's carry will get Mammoth a couple. And yeah, you're going to take another look. Clean pocket, throws Alderelli open. Oh, you love to see that. Put it in front of your receiver. Let him run under it, and it's a great throw and catch. Second and seven coming up. 
three receiver set. On the ground, it's Guerrero. Good cut back at the point of attack. Stays near the hash mark and gets Mammoth the first down into Albany territory at the Great Dane 44. The first drive, Mammoth tried to go in between the tackles, really. This time they get Guerrero outside. Good blocking, sealing the perimeter by Mahmoud Shabana. Nice little play action. Bahar had Scott open down the sideline, but overshot him a little bit. You know, last week, thinking of that Mammoth Lafayette game, even with the good numbers that Guerrero had, he didn't really get outside the tackle very often. Well, and that's at the top of the broadcast. We mentioned that he's kind of becoming an every down guy. And I know that he's got over 2,000 career yards. Someone hears that, they go, yeah, no kidding he is. But he was always the home run hitter. Now he's got the ability to take punishment, Matt, and keep going forward. And he really has become one of the more complete backs in the country. Bahar over the middle. A lot of Albany players involved on the tackle. Hauled in by Sean Clark, the fifth-year senior out of Potsdam, New York. What a target he is, six foot eight. Had a couple of grabs in Mamet's first game of the year at Western Michigan that were impressive in traffic. And that one there, taking a couple of great Danes to bring down the big, tall target in Sean Clark. Fifth catch of the year for Clark, who had at stages last week a nightmare of a game. Three penalties in the second half. Counter set up for Guerrero. Back up the middle. Mammoth offensively looking very sharp. He'll get about seven. Hey, Mammoth starting to get some rhythm against the Albany defensive side that you'll take a look at now. Eli Menser's the guy who kind of plays all over the place. Mammoth has that in Massey. Menser, you'll sometimes see the hand on the ground. You'll sometimes see he kind of roves around for a very hard hitting and physical unit. Second and a short four coming for Mammoth. Past the midpoint here of the first quarter. Four stand-up receivers, three to the top of your picture. One back to the left. It's Guerrero again, this time off the left side. Dragged down by Danny D'Amico, one of the outside linebackers. Yeah, very much right now, partner. I think these two teams right feeling each other out. We saw Albany's first drive. They got a couple of first downs, the drop play in the end zone. And then Mammoth, after a tough first series now, they're starting to get in rhythm a bit. Feeling each other out, I like that. But if you can score in that process, you put yourself in a pretty good position. Well, and you do it because of, we looked at whether wind is going to be a factor. Whatever wind there is, I think is at the back of Mammoth right now. So maybe they can even elect to keep this on the ground, knowing they have Matt Mascara, a very accurate kicker. Four down territory on third and short. Guerrero losing the football as he comes through the line, but I think he was able to hold on to it. It was Guerrero who got back his own miscue. As, as he fell down, he'll be pretty close to a mom at first down. Yeah, he will be close. Here you'll see through the line, and that was Guerrero had it poked out. It was a really nice play. I think it was D'Amico again that got his hand on it, but he was short of the yard to gain. And Mammoth will keep the offense on the field. They did that last week in a huge spot in their own territory. The wind is at the back of the Hawks. So this, an aggressive move early on from Coach Callahan. Tavell Jones in for the first time today. The Mammoth short yardage back. Six foot, 235. He'll get it right side. Has the first down and a couple of yards to spare to the 19 yard line on a snap that started at the 22. You know, don't you get the feeling like if Mammoth gets it fourth and two or three or under, they're probably going to go for it a lot this season. You know, we cover this league. We cover the Big South. We see Kennesaw State. They're built to do that. Mammoth with Devell Jones has the luxury of a one-man fourth and third and short conversion. Hawks will go with a third running back here in Romeo Holden, who will get the carry. Holden with his first career carry has not touched it the last couple of games. He's the number three man on the depth chart. He's a sophomore out of New Rochelle, New York. That, of course, kind of taking the place of Jawan Fari, who Mammoth did expect back. He's going through an appeal process right now, and at some point, the Hawks will hope to get the good sophomore running back into the fold. Such depth at the position. Both of these teams can throw so many different good running backs at you. Bahar stepping in the pocket, keeps his feet, and then gets knocked down. Good job coming off the edge for Albany. Anthony Lang 
number 91 with the sack. Well, it's not Lang initially. That was his teammate that went low. That was Menser. We mentioned he's a terror off the edge. Bahar had, I guess, a split second, Matt, to try and get rid of the football, but just no time up front. Now, Bahar will have to come out because his helmet got knocked off. So now you get the first snap this season for Brandon Harris. Harris, the backup quarterback, kind of a multi-dimensional type QB. Gets the snap here. They're going to let him throw. He'll roll to his right, buying some time under pressure. Fights off one and then will step out of bounds. It was Menser, the player who was giving chase. And after Monmouth decided to go for it on fourth and a yard, they certainly will think twice about going for it on fourth and 17. A smart play for Harris to not throw it into traffic, Matt, but he's got to throw that ball out of bounds. He just took a loss, made the field goal try for his kicker just a little harder. It's Mad Mascara, the reliable kicker for the Hawks. He'll try a 43-yarder from the right hash. It hangs into the air, drifting off to the left, and no good. You know, interesting as you think about that, Eddie, when Monmouth went for it on fourth and one, they were at the 22-yard line because of that decision of not throwing the ball away, making the kick a little bit harder. They actually may have been better off in the first place just letting Mascara kick it. Well, and that's why, you know, it's a tough spot, third and 13 when Harris gets put in the game. But And you love his escapability. That's what he's kind of known for. But when you break out of the pocket, throw that football to Larchwood Avenue if you're Brandon Harris. You don't want to take the loss because then you made it that much harder. And how many yards did Mascara miss that field goal by? Two or three? That's the difference sometimes. Eddie showing his knowledge of the local road system here in the West Long Branch area. I've been that's re speeding that's on research. That I've been caught speeding on that road. That's why I know. First and 10, under four to go. Counter play back to the middle of the field. Nothing doing that time for the Albany offense. It was number 21, Carl Mofor on the carry. Talk about James a week ago with 229. Mofor had himself a pretty good day as well, a career high. Buck 23 on 18 carries against the Bryant Bulldogs. Yeah, he's averaging almost five yards a carry, and his teammate James is averaging 10 more yards a carry. He had a huge 83-yard run in that game. But Mofer's the guy who is going to get the job done between the tackles, gain the tough yards. Good old-fashioned first quarter here, Northeast Conference. Old teams matching wits against one another. Quick pass to the outside. Catch is made by Dev Holmes, but is pushed out after only a gain of three. I used to love doing these games, Matt, back in the day. You and I have done what? Maybe 10 Monmouth Albany games, it feels like, in our careers. They always play tough, physical, but good football, too. Neither team really beats itself, and that's pretty representative of this first quarter scoreless with about two minutes and change to go. On these third and longs, let's see if Monmouth decides to bring pressure. Keep an eye on Massey in a three-point stance. The left of your picture. He's coming. Mammoth will drop eight over the middle. Holmes was open, but he's overshot by Undercuffler. Well, two, two things on that play, right? If you're Albany, it's a miss because Holmes is wide open. And if you're Mammoth, you got to be concerned that you have a guy running wide open in your secondary. The you know, Undercuffler that time, all he had to do was kind of gather himself for maybe another half a tick, right? The clock in the quarterback's head is always going to go a little quicker when you're younger, right? It gets better as you get older. That time he had maybe one extra pad of the football, and then it's also on home. you got to sit down in that zone. Great Danes will punt for the first time, uh, the second time today. Joey Mitchell hangs it in the air. Morales got bumped. That will be a penalty. Running down the field in coverage was Kareem Gibson. First mental mistake either way in this game. It was pretty clear that fair catch was called. And yeah, Gibson, it happens when you're sprinting and you're trying to beat the gunner with you. Now, they're, uh, they're going to have a conversation. Matt, this is probably just going to be a yardage situation where the penalty occurred, how many to mark it up. The struggle continues. Edwin Lee, our referee. Good luck, Edwin. 
2.18 to go in the first quarter. We will take a timeout, come back. Hawk football when we return. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. I can't believe it. That cop brought his karaoke machine. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Boom, boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bon boy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work, day in and day out, to take a step forward towards degrees, championships, our goals, excellence on every level. 11 schools, more than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. This Big South Network broadcast is brought to you in part by GEICO. Big South alumni could save even more with an alumni discount from GEICO. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. And by Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. And also by Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. 2.18 to go, a back and forth first quarter. Third time that Monmouth will get a possession offensively in this first 15 minutes. A bar so far in the day, three of five. On the ground, it's Guerrero off the left side. He'll get about six. Let's keep an eye, too. We mentioned that Manny Christian, a normal starter at left guard, not playing today. Charles James in his spot. Mammoth will rotate some players. Right now, it's John Galena at the left guard spot, and Brian Syracuse, his backup, is at the right guard position. Counterplay for Guerrero, trying to get him on the edge. Cannot get around Jaron Williams, the former member of the Red Flash out at St. Francis, Pennsylvania. Here is a grad student for his last year of eligibility keeping that, like we've been talking about, that Northeast Conference flow going. This is a, a big one, though, because we've got a CAA team against a Big South team partner, leagues that have put multiple teams in the playoffs, and you look at Albany's league schedule, so so daunting, and Monmouth has Kennesaw State and some really good teams in the league as well. Third and two, Bahar moving left. He's got the first down and more. There's Bahar at the 30. Alex not to slide, finally tripped up, gets Monmouth the first down. A.J. Missler, the one who made the tackle. Bahar looking downfield and then man coverage. He sees the back of a lot of jerseys, so he turns and runs, and he can do that well, and he picks a spot. Guerrero inside the 10, inside the 5, untouched into the end zone for Pete Guerrero, who's got his third rushing touchdown of the year. The big play capability of the Mammoth offense on full display. You get Bahar on the escape, you get Guerrero up the middle, and when we take another look at that one, you're going to see the offensive line winning at the point of attack. If P. Guerrero is getting a four or five step head start into full speed, you're not going to catch him. And that was all done by the group up front clearing the hole. Extra point for Mascara. Good look at the high overhead cam with the football coming right at you. And 
Mammoth will cap off a quick scoring drive. Four plays, 55 yards, only 118 off the clock. Coming right at you. Look at the offensive line clearing the space. Once Guerrero gets a step on you, you're not going to get the speedster. Puts Mammoth in front, 7-0 ladder stages in the first. September 16, 2017, Albany beat Monmouth 28 to 14, something we've referenced already. Pete Guerrero on that day in his first year of college football, 13 carries for 26 yards, was beaten up. Eddie, so far today, it's a different story. Uh, Matt, nine for 65 and a score, and that 10 to 15 pounds of muscle that Guerrero put on the offseason that he referenced, you could see it in full effect. He is bouncing off of tacklers, that time it was the offensive line that cleared the way for him, but he is a different running back now than he was then. That last run, more yards than he gained the first time he faced the Great Danes a couple of seasons ago. Here's Mascara to kick off into the win. This is going to hang and be grabbed at the 15-yard line. Going to the far side is McDonald. Albany will get the football back. You know, you think of Guerrero and kind of his evolution. You talked about it over 2,000 yards. He's had a really good career. I think now that he's in his third year, a lot of people forget he came to Monmouth as a track star. Well, I was just going to say, it's funny the way that he's thought of now as one of the most well-regarded running backs in the country because there was a time two years ago he was just trying to make the team. He was just trying to fight for carries, and then he ends up really bursting onto the scene, 1,000 yards in his freshman season, just missed the mark last year. He's really become a full-service, well-rounded running back. Last minute in the opening quarter, the give will go to Alex James, who gets back to the line of scrimmage before being dragged down, host of Hawks on the tackle. So a few possessions ago, we were saying, right, these two teams were, were a couple of boxers just kind of sparring in the middle of the ring. Not sure what to expect. Well, Mamet threw the first punch with that Bahar scramble and the Guerrero touchdown. Now you see what the red shirt freshman Jeff Undercuffler has as far as a counter punch. Again, you want to help your quarterback with easy completions and manageable down and distance. That time Mammoth won defensively on first down. Undercuffler under center. Play action, rolls right, stops, throws down the middle of the field. Looking step for step coverage on Jawan Green was the junior safety, Anthony Budd. Yeah, Budd had, I think you and I would agree, a Sports Center top 10 ask interception last week. Got a lot of play on social media. He is very reliable in pass coverage. 
Most teams don't want to get their safeties matched up on receivers. Mamet doesn't mind because Bud is so versatile. So they get the stop on first. You get the pass defense on third. Now it's a third and long for the young Albany quarterback. Mammoth will go with six defensive backs in this defensive possession. Third down and 10 with nine seconds remaining in the quarter. From the shotgun, Undercuffler dumps down over the middle. Good move by James to get the first down for Albany, a much needed first down for the Great Dane offense. Oh, what a move, Alex James. Oh my goodness, when he caught it, he was short of the mark, what a move. And a first down for Albany. That's where they'll have it to begin the second. Battle of the running backs. That was the story in our open. And you've seen it back and forth. That last play by James keeps Albany on the offense. That one from Guerrero has given Mammoth a 7-0 lead. First quarter in the books. We start the second block of 15 minutes with Mammoth leading by a score of seven to nothing. A very interesting uh, running back matchup we've got. Eddie, this last play by Alex James, a highlight. It really was. He caught the ball short of the sticks on third and 10. You saw that move he put on two different Mammoth Hawks, glancing with the right foot and then cutting the other way. That's the ability that Alex James brings to the table, Matt. That's why he had such a monstrous game a week ago against Bryant. He just adds a whole new dimension to what Albany does offensively. 14-yard pickup, his second reception of the season. Stays in, and Undercuffler wants to go downtown again. Fumbles the football. Mammoth has it. The strip on the backside for the Hawks. It was Dewan Cooper with the strip and Kurt Almer 
falling on the football. Well, Monmouth hasn't got a lot of pressure on the quarterback this season, but not on this play. Only three guys go into the route. You see James tried to pick up the blitz in Cooper, and Cooper just manhandled him out of the way, gets the sack, Almer with the recovery. And Dewan Cooper, Matt, who has played so much football for Monmouth, comes up with a huge play. 6'3", 210-pound junior from Germantown, Maryland. In the flat, catch is made by Brandon Batts, number 13. Batts forward progress will get him to the 30. Should be enough to move the sticks. Yeah, go back to that sack. You saw the way Albany constructed things, Matt. It, it wasn't Mofer in the game, it was James. So it's more of a speed guy. And when James had to pick up Dewan Cooper, it was a bit of a mismatch. And Cooper's added some weight to himself as well. That was a tremendous play by the Monmouth linebacker. Empty backfield for Bahar on first and 10. Just up and going here, second quarter. Rolls left, throws across his body, incomplete. Wanted bats again. You know, we saw this last week, Eddie. Oftentimes you'll see receivers in and out of the game. Monmouth has almost come up with two separate units. It'll be more Alderelli and Green, and then on this particular set of downs, they bring in three brand new guys in Carney, Treadway, and Bats. You almost think it's see how everyone's playing, right? And then maybe as the game wears on, then you start to go with who has the hot hand, if you will. But you're right. This is receivers four through six on the depth chart. Bahar pressured. He's going to throw it away wisely instead of taking the sack. It'll bring up third and ten. Eli Menser, he has been a pest already for Albany defensively. Well, his coach told us how good he's been playing. That time, too, the pressure up the middle from Nick Griffin, the redshirt senior from in the Albany area. You know, Albany traditionally is really good in the front seven. And you can see this team is getting back to that Albany traditional look. That's what Coach Gattuso wants. He wants him to build that identity that they're so familiar and known for. Bahar pressured again. And again, we'll basically throw it away. Here comes the field goal team. Mascara missed on a 43-yarder earlier. This will be a little bit further. And Eddie, he's going to hit this one into an increasing wind. Yeah, the first one from a degree of difficulty standpoint is easier than this one. This is going directly into a wind. The flag is literally blowing right into the face of Matt Mascara. McCreary is the holder. 47-yarder. It's got the leg, and it goes through the uprights. That is a very good field goal for the senior, Matt Mascara. That's impressive. He's one of the best, most accurate kickers in the country, and Monmouth needed that. As he gets the second one on the afternoon, Monmouth now, Matt, with a 10-0 lead. I can't believe it. That car brought his karaoke machine. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. No, Kevin. No, Kevin. No, no. Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Rise and shine, people. It's your perfect day. A chance to find inspiration and prepare for the future. To build lasting relationships and push the limit harder than before. This is your today. 
and it couldn't be more perfect. Until tomorrow, when it happens again. Bonjour. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bon boy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. You are watching ESPN Plus, and this Big South Network broadcast is brought to you by Geico. Mammoth cashes in with points after the turnover. Matt Mascara with a 47 yard field goal, five plays, 10 yards, only took 36 seconds. And Eddie, uh, no disputing the fact that this was a great kick, but I know maybe we're both a little bit curious why Mama decided to get away from the run game there. And to this point in the game, running the football very well, five yards a carry, and the way you look at it is your defense just forced a turnover. And I love throwing in that situation on first down, but then figure you run it, you're running it well, maybe look to give your defense a minute or two extra of a breather. And credit to Albany, they got put in a tough spot defensively with Monmouth getting it on the plus territory and they came up with a stop. A returnable kick from just outside the goal line for Donovan McDonald, who gets greeted inside the 10. What a great open field tackle by Isaiah Bishop, freshman linebacker out of Boyd's, Maryland. Well, you want to make sure everyone remembers your number? Do something like that on special teams. Goodness, what a hit by Isaiah Bishop, the 6'2 freshman. And you want to maybe put a little star next to that. That would be something that uh, the youngster will be able to say in film sessions. Hey, Coach, maybe I can get a couple more plays next week. You know, like I, I can do that if you if you let me run a little bit. Well, what's the most famous example, right? Terrell Davis had that special teams tackle in a preseason game. He goes to the Hall of Fame. You can do it on special teams. Coaches love it. Albany here on first down. Ball popped out again. Still free. Mammoth says they will fall on it, and I believe they do. Hawks football, back-to-back -back turnovers. Kara Mofor this time had it stripped away. The fighting for extra yards. Mofor normally breaks a lot of tackles, and he's trying to do it again here. You'll see one hand on the football. Here he's got four different Mammoth players around him. It's Daquan Grimes who rips it out. And then it's recovered by Eddie Morales the third. And Mammoth hasn't been great. Matt forcing turnovers the last few years. Now if, now if this is upheld after a review, they'll have forced two. They will take another look at it. I think to see if Mofor's knee was down before the ball popped out on the strip from Grimes. I didn't see it on the initial. See if we could revisit it because that was, you see four different Mammoth players behind Mofer. It's Grimes who rips it out. All right, partner, let's take a look. Watch the left knee. Maybe the right knee. Now that ball's out. Ball's out. That is a fumble. And that is, uh, you know, I feel bad for Mofer because, you know, when you break tackles and you you run with such power, you allow the other players to come in and try to strip it out, right? He doesn't give the ball up very often. And that's why some coaches, you know, Matt, get what you can, go down. I know that that's kind of out there. That's a great play by Grimes, pure and simple. He rips the ball out. Albany doesn't normally turn it over. Monmouth hasn't forced a lot of turnovers, and right now they're going to be plus two in this game. A very good recovery as well from Eddie Morales the third, as the ball popped out, then popped out again. You see the ball is out right there before either knee is down from what we can see from Carl Mofor. Yeah, it looks like a fumble. And our official is, I, I think we're pretty clear in it being a fumble. Now when it takes a little bit longer, normally what they, they do is they just check on where the ball is, where Mammoth will have it first and 10. Now how about Grimes, by the way, this season? Came into this game leading the team in tackles, and he has been a very productive player for Mom at the last year and change. Senior out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. Ruling on the field has been confirmed, so it will be 
Hawks football. They got three off a turnover last time around. They'll look for more this time around as they'll take over on the Albany 22. Backfield including Bahar and Guerrero. Tight end right, trips left. Guerrero stretching left side. Gang tackled at the 20, hopping over the top of the pile, A.J. Mistler. Similar spot to when Monmouth got it last time when they had to settle for the Mascara field goal. However, this time they keep it on the ground to Guerrero. At least get you know, a couple of yards, get into the flow a little bit. Second and eight. It's Guerrero again. Cuts back once, twice. And we'll work it down this time inside the 15 to the 14. Be about a yard shy of a new set of downs. But you give yourself flexibility now with a play call. You know, third and short, they're gonna call it about third and one, and Mammoth looked to go is gonna look to go fast. Drew pistol set. Guerrero bangs off the right side. He's gonna be right at the yard marker. This will depend on the spot of the football. They'll call it fourth down. So Mama trying to catch Albany off balance and going quickly. And it's one right at the point of attack. Oh goodness, there was a huge collision right in the middle of that defensive front. And Monmouth will keep the offense on the field. Hawks will bring in Devell Jones. They will bring back in Charles James as an extra offensive lineman. Fourth and about a half a yard. Jones getting it, makes one man miss, has the first down, hops through 10 yard line, down to the eight. You wanna talk about the maturation of a player Two, three years ago, Devell Jones, Eddie, I think we both agree, gets tackled in the backfield. Uh, he would have run right into that first tackler and he made a miss instead. That's where Devell Jones, Matt, being able to be shiftier in the hole is such an added benefit to Mammoth. He gave that little shuffle cut right at the point of attack and he's able to get the first down and Mammoth continues to find success running the football. Guerrero back in, goes to the left of Bahar. Three receivers that direction as well. This is Bahar on the quarterback keep. He'll get inside the five to the four. You don't see many design runs for Kenji Bahar. Definitely more known for his strong arm and throwing capability. Yeah, it took a pretty big collision. Typically when he runs, it's to get outside the pocket, break contain. You don't want to see your, your QB1 take hits like that, but the previous series, Mammoth went all to the air. This time, they're keeping it all on the ground. And what's that doing? It's allowing their defense to rest. It's also more plays that Albany has to defend. Second and goal from the four. Guerrero starts in, goes out. Gets tripped up by Nick Griffin, the defensive end down just inside the two yard line where it will be third and goal. That was such a good job by Griffin. He stayed home, he didn't allow Guerrero to bounce outside, and then he made the sure tackle. That's a hard play to do when number 25 is coming at you. With all his speed, Griffin played it about as well as you can. Single receiver to the right is Terrence Green Jr. He'll motion, try and set the edge. Guerrero ripped down in the backfield. Hard charge from the nose man, the redshirt sophomore, Mason Walker. It's the Albany defensive front making two good plays in a row. First Griffin, now Walker. He gets right in the hole and Guerrero had nowhere to go. That's a tremendous job by Albany defensively after Mammoth had got into goal to go. First Griffin, then Walker standing up and forcing Mammoth's second straight field goal attempt. Basically an extra point here for Mascara to tack three more on the board. Good snap, good hold. Mascara is two of three on the day. Put three more on the board for Mammoth, but the Albany defense has held on two consecutive possessions after turnovers. 9.49 remaining in the opening half. 
Hawks up by 13. Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference for the best rates. Book directly with Marriott by heading to BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. You'll support Big South student athletes in the process. That's BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. Some of the old photos of this longtime rivalry. These teams going back to the days of the Northeast Conference. This the 17th time that they have played. Albany with the overall series advantage 12-4. Mammoth last win in 2006. Yeah, but they've had a good start to this one, out gaining Albany to this point in the game. 154 yards to just 60 total. And right now, Jeff Undercuffler and Albany in need of a drive down two scores. McDonald will call for a fair catch, which will bring the ball out. It's a new little wrinkle that I'm sure most fans probably getting used to. I heard some oohs and ahs. Why are you calling for a fair <laughs> catch inside your five yard line? You can do that these days and it basically counts as a touchback and it comes to the 25 yard line. Probably thought twice after getting ripped down the last time. And I was just gonna agree. That last play was Mammoth all over it from a kick return defensive standpoint. Now Albany in need of a drive. Just 25 yards between Mofor and James. Undercuffler wants to throw. Goes high to the far side for Jarrah Reeves, who will make the catch, get a foot in bounds, and pick up about four. And what Albany wants to do is be pretty balanced, like Monmouth, really. They want to kind of air a little bit towards the run. But down 13 nothing. No need to obviously get out of what you do offensively here. Still very much keep the whole playbook in check. Mammoth showing pressure. Undercuffler throws. He's got a man near side. Catches made by Deb Holmes, who will get the Great Danes a first down out close to the 40-yard line. And you know why Jeff Undercuffler, Matt, has a pretty bright future? This throw is from far hash. Look at that throw. That is a long way to throw a football, and he made it look very easy. This is a backwards pass, a throw option over the top. Reeves was wide open. Holmes just couldn't get it to him. There were a few different players that were wide open. You know, Reeves was the intended target, but Jawan Green was also running scot-free down the middle of the field. And if you see, it 
Matt, on that play, Albany threw and Undercuffler did a nice job of disguising it, didn't make it look to the defense like it was clearly behind the line. But that's the second big play in this game that Albany's missed, the drop touchdown in the first quarter as well. Second and 10, a split back set. Everybody into the pattern. Undercuffler, strong throw and a good grab is made by Reeves, who's got a couple of catches on the drive. That will get him 11. Jared Reeves, the six-foot senior from Williamsport, PA. You know, Undercuffler is just so fluid in his motion. He's got a pure over-the-top throwing motion. And when it comes out of the right arm of six foot five, it, it looks pretty smooth. You mentioned it earlier, the sixth different starting quarterback in the six years under Greg Gattuso. Albany coaching staff feels like they have the future in Undercuffler. Throwing here, incomplete. Looking again for Reeves. We'll stop the clock with 8.26 to go in this first half. He never got turned around. It looked as though he and Justin Terry were just hand fighting downfield. That was that run pass option, which over the last couple of seasons has really become a lot of teams' primary offense. You know, Albany doesn't do it as their only sort of play action, but you know when you're not on the same page, and that time it just didn't materialize, looked as though a step or two off. Run up the middle. Heard the hit from up here that Carl Mofort took, but he spins forward and gets about four. Yeah, brings up another third down, and Albany so far, two out of four converting third downs. Mammoth bringing their extra defensive backs in and what so far has been their pass rush unit up front. Massey, DeAndre Clifton, the freshman, and Kahari Scarlett in as the nose man. Third and seven. Comes pressure, draw play, well designed play. It'll bring up fourth down. They needed seven, got five. A little quick hitter from Mo Four off the right side. And because I think of the success there, I'm going to say that the offense is going to stay on the field, and there hasn't even been a look over to the sideline. Mo Four, again, is the guy. He's the 230 pound back that a lot of times delivers the punishment. Offense staying on the field on fourth down. Under Coupler, under center. It's a true eye look. Play clock to 12. Wonder if they're trying to draw Mammoth. Under Coupler, back under center. Hussein moves to the right. This is the give, not even close from 04. Not even close. Mammoth reset the line of scrimmage on that play. And they were in the backfield on Mofer. They, at the snap, reset the line about a yard back. And I think he even lost a couple of yards. You'll see the win in the middle of this defensive line. Here, Kurt Almer kind of gets the wedge on the center, and there they allow the linebackers to get in and help gang tackle Mofer. Matt Mammoth has been very impressive here in this first half. It was a Hawk defense that yielded minus 12 last week on the ground to Lafayette. Chance here to build on a 13-0 lead. Bahar right to the air. Quick reception, Alderelli's got another one. That was the fastball from Bahar as Jaron Williams was right there on coverage. Clock moving as we work down towards six remaining. Shotgun for Bahar. Miscommunication off to the far side between he and Alderelli. See what Mamet does here near midfield. Man, if they keep it on the ground here, you figure it could be four downs with how often we've seen them go for it. 
so far early this season. New signals coming in as the Mammoth offense looks to the sideline. A new man calling the plays this year, the offensive coordinator, Jeff Gallo, the former Hawk. Here's Guerrero, has the first down in Albany territory, taken down to the 44-yard line. It's going to get the team over 100 yards rushing. Guerrero's about 80 so far in this first half. Slip screen set up. Alderelli will make the catch. He'll get three and a half, maybe four. There is Jeff Gallo, the 2005 graduate of Monmouth, former offensive lineman, calling the plays for the first time as the new OC taking over for Kevin Morris. He now in the Ivy League with Penn. There was a, a late flag that came out that was an illegal substitution for Albany. There you go. It's a five yard penalty. Sets up first and five. Play action, Bahar has all day to throw. Has a man open in the end zone, touchdown, Mammoth. Terrence Green Jr. from downtown. A 39 yard pitch and catch. Bahar from Baltimore throws to Green from Philly. City to city, and Mammoth is up big. Can't throw it better than that if you're Kenji Bahar. And a name we haven't mentioned yet, Terrence Green. He's got the look, Matt, of someone who could be a big time player filling the shoes of Reggie White Jr. from a season ago. Mammoth ran their kick team on, then ran their offense back Tonight. on. They're gonna, I think, talk about going for two to try to get back to a full three touchdown advantage at 21, but they will use a timeout. Eddie, let's break this down. It sets up with Bahar that little play action. Well, the little shuffle slide to the left as well, single coverage, and Green does all the work as he went to the house. It, it, that was, Matt, what a veteran quarterback can do. It's the play action. Bahar didn't have to reset himself. It was just a little shuffle slide to the left. He's got the strong enough arm that he can get into it once that back foot's on the ground. And that is an excellent throw into the wind, mind you, to now put Mammoth up three scores. One and a half for Mammoth offensively. 200 yards of total offense. I don't know if you get more balanced than 104 on the ground and 102 in the air. Well, you could go 103 and 103. I mean, if, if you really want me to be picky, I mean, I our years of working together, I feel like I can do that. I can, have the, I can poke fun at that comment you just made. You are ever the professor, by the way. Here is Bahar going for two. Sets it up, has it. Zach Treadway, the junior from Langhorn, PA. All kinds of offensive weapons on display for Mammoth. Bahar has been sharp, and it's Mammoth who has a 21-0 lead. Well, they've done a lot of damage on the ground in this first half, but when you can go downtown, you have a plethora of weapons to use. Mammoth doing it on the ground and in the air.
There is Terrence Green, Jr., the six-foot junior out of Philadelphia, PA. He hauls in that most recent touchdown from Kenji Bahar. Good first half for this Mama team. They lead 21 to nothing over Albany. And as uh, we look ahead a little bit to our Geico halftime report, which will have scores, we'll look at the CAA Big South preseason poll. We'll be joined by Big South Commissioner Kyle Colander, who is in the area. Um, and he, maybe a little bit of a um, sight sideline to this game would be it's a Big South team against a CAA team. And these are two of the better leagues within all of FCS football. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you get these old league rivals playing that represent two of indeed the strongest leagues. And it leads to bragging rights, right, between the two conferences. You know, Matt, uh, the Big South is, is probably as strong as it's been, and it's getting better, it's getting bigger. But when you talk to CAA, right, that is such a gauntlet in that league. And right now, Mammoth with the upper hand on the CAA's Great Danes. We would usually say maybe Big Sky CAA top two leagues in all of FCS football with the Missouri Valley in there as well. Probably the, t the big three, they would almost say. I would say that, right? If FBS has the power five, maybe those would be the big three of FCS. But with what Kennesaw State has done and Monmouth making the playoffs as an at-large a couple of seasons ago, the, the Big South is, I think, poised to continue its upward trajectory. You know, they lost heavy hitters. You lose a Coastal Carolina, you lose a Liberty. That's significant in the job Kyle Kalander and crew did to kind of rebuild the Big South and make it as competitive and good as, as it is. Hats off to them and full credit for making this one of the better leagues. I'm throwing the Big South in there as the fourth. The league is big as it's ever been in football with eight members this season. Good adjustment on the football by Donovan McDonald who will make the catch. McDonald from right here in New Jersey is a West Orange product. This is a tough adjustment. And he runs one way, dove the other way, and makes the first down catch. Coming up on five remaining in the first half. Albany would love to try and just get themselves on the scoreboard here. Take a little momentum. McDonald is open, almost intercepted on a little deflection from the corner, Justin Terry. Well, McDonald made the mistake of while trying to play the ball, he actually put Terry in a better position than he would have been otherwise. You know, he almost ran that route like it's a back shoulder fade and he had to adjust and then go up to get it. We've seen Terry come up with big plays, come up with interceptions, and that time McDonald had to turn into the defensive back. Second and 10. Under Cuffler, wants to go deep, has a man there, there's the points that Albany has been waiting for. Jawan Green getting past the coverage, and the Great Dane offense has finally struck. Well, they should have had the game's first touchdown, if you remember, on a long ball that was dropped. This one, however, is corralled by Green. Partner, what's that? Maybe the third or fourth throw from Jeff Undercuffler that has been very impressive. He threw that one, laid it out, let his receiver run under it, and that is a big answer for the young quarterback in this Albany team. 64-yard strike. Undercuffler, who's got his fifth touchdown throwing of the season. Four plays, 76 yards, took less than a minute. That's a good way, Eddie, for Albany to get back into the football game. Well, it is the quick strike. And now you're Albany, and you go. You know now that you can go over the top if need be. But now it's going to be on the other side of the ball, where Monmouth has kind of gone up and down the field on him a bit here in the first half, and now we'll have four and change to do so again, but that is a big time throw from the red shirt freshman. He gets a lot of air under it, puts it out. It's just a perfect throw. Perfect throw, and as you see, Eddie Morales, who was the corner, I'm not sure if he was expecting help over the top. 
from Bud, the safety, but both were in the picture running down Jawan Green, who has the touchdown. It's his third receiving score of the year. And now under Cuffler with 137 yards and a score. Yeah, both of our quarterbacks having similar days where they've each thrown a touchdown, no picks. Not a great completion percentage either way, but they've both made big plays in the passing game. Returnable for Lonnie Moore. 15, 20, 25, cut back 30. Open field 40. Has the kicker to beat midfield. Does get upended by Dylan Burns, but a big return for a Moore who had it from right around the five yard line when he started. It really read his blocks well. Started coming in and then right around the top of this return, right about here, things start developing. The nice cut in, breaking a tackle, good blocks. Cooper got one in and it's a nice job by the kicker, but more able to get into plus territory, responding to the long touchdown from Albany. Mammoth just gave up their first seven of the game. They'll try and answer back here. Alderelli with another one of those easy catches on the far side. Steps out after a gain of three. You're really starting to see the depth of this Mammoth receiving core as well. And more with that big kick return, Matt. He came into the game as Mammoth's leading receiver, but he hasn't caught a pass so far in this game. Still finding a way to make an impact. Alderelli, his fourth reception of the day. Three into the pattern. Bahar dumps it. Had Lonnie Moore open on cue, was set to make his first step to the day, drop the football. Most times you'll see Lonnie Moore make this catch. Yeah, and that's one of those maybe heard a footstep or two. And I think Albany's going to have to take a timeout. They won't get the timeout. Matt, they're going to be whistled. They for have having, 12 players on yeah, the field. They had too many guys on the field, exactly. And that's a big drop for Moore that now, because of this Albany penalty, isn't as bad as it was. Timeout. Oh, they did get the timeout. I'll tell you what, the mic sounds like poor, our poor referees in a squall down there. Just a 30-second timeout with the third and seven coming up for Mammoth. You know, Eddie, as much as we've talked about Mammoth playing from in front, if Albany could get a stop here, get the football back, we just saw Undercuffler be able to go deep when, when he needed to, all of a sudden you think maybe the Great Danes could get another one, and we got ourselves a pretty good football game in the second half. I think it's kind of hanging in the balance right now, right? Just under four minutes to go. That Albany touchdown did kind of change things a little bit as far as what this first half looks like. And right now, third and seven's kind of a big spot in this game, Matt, because if Mammoth doesn't gain much of anything, they probably are going to have to punt it because of where they are in the field. And then, we said, we've seen Albany have big play capability in this game, and they haven't got it going on the ground yet. Four receivers set, now emptied out with Guerrero. Over the middle, it's intercepted. Great read by Muthini, Levi Muthini, the middle linebacker. He stepped right in the passing lane. Bahar never saw him, and Albany makes that big play that they've been waiting for. Well, this is Bahar thought he was going to rush, and then Muthini just steps up. He cuts in front of that crossing route in the middle, makes the catch, and Albany now in business as they had given Mammoth a couple turnovers. Now the Great Danes get one back, partner, and they are in the plus side. Amazing how quick momentum can change. And you don't see that often from Kenji Bahar. A lot of his interceptions throughout of his, career, his career has been downfield. You know, he normally makes the right read. That time, Matheny got the better of him. His second pick of the season. <laughs> On the ground, Albany will go. Carry for Alex James. Player down for Mammoth, you see is Evan Powell holding his right lower leg. He, he got up and then you could tell when he stood up, 
something wasn't quite right with the senior. That's when he went down. He has been so important to what Mammoth does defensively, getting after the quarterback and also just helping lead that defense that now, if Powell's unable to go, will be without a couple of their opening day starters, I guess you could say. We'll get another look at that interception from Matheny. And I don't think Eddie, and I said it on the call, I don't think Bahar really had any idea that he was coming across in coverage. Well, he didn't, but you also see that he was looking for Brandon Batts. And had Matheny not picked it off, a teammate of his was right there. So that was a rare miss from Kenji Bahar as far as not being on the same page with his receiver. And... I miscalled it initially. I said Matheny was rushing, but he didn't. He just sat back in the zone. And here you'll see, you see 45 shuffling to the left of your screen. He just read, he just read Kenji Bahar's eyes the whole time. And when Bahar looked right and kept his attention to the right, Matheny didn't have to flip his hips, change course. He just could kind of go right towards the football and now set Albany up second down as Powell's able to walk off under his own power. Good news for Monmouth, one of the team captains and Maybe the de facto leader of that front seven. Second and six. Albany's got some life. Two to either side for Undercuffler. Play action. They'll go to the sideline. Interception opportunity, and it's grabbed by Terry, who shakes a tackle at the 10, spins away from another at the 20, Gets out over the 25-yard line. Albany taketh and then giveth away an overthrow by Undercuffler, a mistake from the redshirt freshman. So now we've got a veteran quarterback and a young quarterback exchanging interceptions. As good of a play as Matheny's was to take Bahar, this is just a miss from Undercuffler. And they hit a big play earlier, trying to do it again. And Terry looks more like the receiver again in this play. He was in just better position. Nice job playing the football by the young Mammoth defensive back. Justin Terry, the junior cover corner from Brooklyn. Big hole off the right side for Guerrero. His best offensive weapon today, Pete Guerrero. That carry will take him over 100 yards on the day. He has been the most consistent Mammoth player. Now, he's a little shaken up at the end of that run. And you'll be able to see kind of when it happens. He comes through the hole just untouched, does bounce off a tackle. And then towards the end of this run, you can't see it, but he got up kind of holding his, his inner thigh, almost in that quad area. Holden will get the carry. Saw him in the first quarter. Loss of a yard to bring up second and 11. Yeah, that run did put Guerrero over 100, and I'm looking down on the field now and seeing if we can spot number 25 who did walk off after that previous run. Most of the play clock like, here. Like, Down to 12. He'll let it fly. Look to the hash mark, overshoots Lonnie Moore, who did have a step on his coverage. He was running away from a couple of defensive backs. And Bahar just overshot him. That wind had died down before that throw. You can see he hits that third step, lets it go. He is running behind the defense just bit too far. Moore was kind of running away from Bahar as well, not a direct route. Guerrero back into the game. He'll operate as a split receiver to the right. Empty backfield, three up top, two near side for Bahar. Let's it go. Wants Guerrero, has him, has the first down. New little wrinkle into the Mammoth offense with Pete Guerrero as a wide receiver. We haven't seen him in that too much the last couple of seasons, but this time you could see his continued development, continued growth. That time split out, ran that route like a receiver. 
able to get the first down. 13-yard pickup. Bahar wanting to go deep again, looking again for Terrence Green. Deflected ball out of bounds. Pretty good coverage that time by Jaron Williams. Cool story, Eddie, about Williams we heard before the game. Grad student from St. Francis, PA. They were doing 40 times in the offseason. He ran a 4-3-4 and was kind of just shrugged it off. Eh, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm pretty fast. Well, they said, have you ever been timed in the 40? He said, I haven't. But I guess if you'd seen Jaron Williams play, you said, hey, he's pretty fast. But they never put a number to it. And you could see the speed helped him there, helped break up that play. Second and 10. Bahar stepping. Now going to elude the rush, let it go. He'll give the down, avoid the rush. Thought for a second, had he decided to run, he would have had some room off the left side. There was kind of a secondary rush coming in on him as well. And, you know, since those two interceptions, this first half has kind of grinded to a halt, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been. Turnovers, incomplete passes, and there's still a minute 21 to go. Third down and 10. Mammoth has two timeouts. Albany has two timeouts. Great Dane showing blitz. Guerrero again as a wide receiver. Nobody over the top as a safety helper. Bahar rolling, throws it low. The ball hit the turf, skipped in before it could get to Sean Clark. It'll set up now. Fourth and 10. It looks like Monmouth will play field position and bring on McCrary to try and pin Albany deep as we move into the last 75 seconds or so of this first half. Kind of a weird first half for Kenji Bahar. Eight of 20. Buck 18, a touchdown and a pick. End over end, it's going to bounce at the 15, take a nice roll inside the 10, and be marked out around the eight yard line. So McCreary doing his job as we go to 108 remaining in this first half. Again, coming up at the half, I'll spend some time chatting with Big South Commissioner Kyle Kalander. Eddie and I have stats and highlights for you, and a check of our out of town scoreboard. It's all presented by Geico. Always good to catch up with the commissioner. We got to talk to him before the game as well. And looking forward to your conversation with Kyle at halftime. Let's see how adventurous Albany is here with two timeouts and 68 seconds. It's a draw play. It's a big hole up the middle for Mofor, who runs through tackles, makes another man miss, has a wall of blockers in front of him. Backside touchdown saving tackle made perhaps by Grimes. Well, to answer your question, it wasn't very adventurous on the call, just a little delayed draw. But look at the moves by Mofer. Couple of shuffle cuts, gets into the open field. Chambers can't bring him down. Nice cut at the 40. And now it's a whole different ball game with 50 seconds left. Albany from the Mammoth 40 yard line, 52 yard run for Mofer. Throw to the outside is incomplete. You know, Matt, until that play, Albany had run for about 35 yards, and that run for Mofer was 52. It was James last week that had the big play for Albany. Now it's his backfield mate. Time, no factor, still 42 seconds, and Albany with a pair of timeouts. From the Mammoth 40, throw across the field. That catch is made for a gain of about 12 to Donovan McDonald, who has his second catch today. A lot of room on the outside for McDonald, respecting the speed. 30 seconds to go for Albany, moving it nicely after the run from Mofer. To the Mammoth 28. Under Cuffler, lofting it into the end zone, has a man wide open, and it's a touchdown for Albany. Jawan Green getting past Terry. 
And Albany, who was down 21, will go in to halftime more than likely down seven. Well, Green has been getting behind Mammoth defensively all half. Didn't see what happened at all in the route, but there's no one over the top. Undercuffler just drops it in. And Green's got 112 yards and two scores in this first half. That's a huge answer for Albany and Jeff Undercuffler and Greg Gattuso. Down 21 nothing. couple of scores in a row. They're back in it. This is Dylan Burns for the extra point. Four play, 92-yard drive. Both scoring drives for Albany have been quick. Extra point is good, and we've got ourselves a brand new football game. Just when you thought that Monmouth might run away with it, Albany has responded back with 14 straight. It was a big run that set it up, and then Albany spreading the field. You can just see it's pretty easy at that point. Green was just running open behind the defense. And we see his big play capability help out an Albany team that, Matt, we talked about running the football all, all first half, all open. And outside of that 52-yard run for Mofer, Albany hasn't done a lot of that. But what they have do is hit some big plays in the passing game. 177 yards and two scores for their redshirt freshman quarterback. A very vertical type uh, attack passing wise. undercuffler has got a good arm. We've seen it on display a couple of times and you referenced it once or twice. Those numbers could probably be even better had his receivers not let him down a couple of times. Well, Albany should have scored the game's first touchdown. I don't remember which player dropped it in the end zone. Was it Holmes? Got to think way back because th there was a chance for them to take a 7-0 lead way back when on a drop ball. Bouncing kick picked up by Castronova, who gets to the 27. And you had asked at the beginning of that last Albany drive how adventurous they were going to get. Matt, I think if you talked to the coaches before, Delayed draw was the first call. If that play goes for three, four yards, you go to halftime. And instead, they get the long run, get the long pass play. And now what was 21-7, Albany backed up, is now 21-14. We'll have a good football game coming up for you in the second half as the teams will run off. It is Mammoth 21 and Albany 14. First three touchdowns, uh, first 21 points, I should say, of the day for Mammoth. The last two for Albany, including this one, the touchdown over the top for Jawan Green. I want it. I can't believe it. That cow brought his karaoke machine. No. I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it. GEICO could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Bonvoy. Bye-bye. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences. Rewards reimagined. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete persist down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student 
and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. Rise and shine, people. It's your perfect day. A chance to find inspiration and prepare for the future. To build lasting relationships and push the limits harder than before. This is your today, and it couldn't be more perfect. Until tomorrow, when it happens again. Imagine life without football. No Friday night lights, no pep rallies, no band. All that time invested to teach young men and women commitment and team spirit, gone. Football, where young men and women compete to be the best. Where fans, cheerleaders, and countless others take part in the team experience. Celebrate the passion that only happens every fall. Join the game. Halftime here in West Long Branch, New Jersey. Take a look at the CAA preseason poll. Generally, as we said, regarded as one of the top leagues in FCS football. James Madison right at the top. And uh, Eddie, of those 12 teams, a lot of those teams already in the top 25. There are no gimmies come conference time. Oh, no. In neither of these leagues is, is there a team you look at and can look to the next week. You look at the CAA preseason poll and just how deep that league is, like you said. And then I think one of the most improved and emerging leagues, Matt, in FCS football is the Big South trying to get a couple of teams into the playoffs. Kennesaw picked as the champion yet again. They are the defending champs. They've made a couple of good runs into the FCS playoffs the last couple of years. Let's take a look at the reigning players of the week. We've seen a couple of them on display uh, during the course of our first half, first for the CAA. Uh, we've seen Alex James, he and Aaron Parker, the co-offensive players, Marcus Willoughby from Elon. You see Towson, you see James Madison. And I always like that, especially early in the year when you see multiple schools represented in these kind of weekly awards. Yeah, it means that your league is having success. And I think the schools in leagues all feel the same way. They're fans of the other teams in the league until conference play starts. And conversely, three Monmouth Hawks were rewarded, Matt, for their win a week ago against Lafayette. Guys, we've been talking about already Pete Guerrero having another good day, over 100 yards. Daquan Grimes, Matt Mascara has uh, a field goal, and he's been part of things as well. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we will be joined by the Big South Commissioner, Kyle Colander. Stick around. Halftime brought to you by Geico.
It is halftime here at Monmouth University. Monmouth with a 21-14 advantage over uh, Albany as these two longtime rivals kind of hook back up. And as we just talked about before break, a couple of minutes here with the Big South Commissioner, Kyle Kalander, who's always good enough to give us uh, his time and good enough to join us here in the booth. First of all, uh, appreciate you coming up. Um, exciting. Absolutely. Good game back and forth. And, you know, one of the things that Eddie and I were talking about, and in these non-conference games, you've got – two teams from two of the better leagues in college football. It's always kind of interesting to see how they match up. Right. Well, you know, something that is always frustrating to me is the coaches are so concerned about winning the league. You know, they focus on the conference games. But to me and to the conference, and, and certainly the coaches to a certain extent, the non-conference games are so important because those are the ones that really count when you talk about the committee looking at you at the end of the season for the playoffs. How did you do against non-conference competition? Who did you play? What's your strength of schedule like? How did you do in those games? So a game like this goes a long ways at the end of the season when you're looking at not only Monmouth in terms of their credentials for potentially getting an at-large bid if they don't win the league for the FCS playoffs, and then how did the conference do as a whole? So uh, it, it's it's really important, I think, that we schedule the right people and they win the right games, and it goes a long ways, and, and playing a tough CAA team like Albany is, is really a big game for us. You just hit a lot of the talking points that I'm sure Monmouth was uh, worried about at the end of the 2018 season right. uh, a year ago. Let, let's look at the league right now because as the, and we always talk about this when, when we get a chance to catch up. The ever-changing world of college sports, college football, uh, the Big South football-wise right now, as strong as it's ever been with eight members. Yeah, we really feel good about where we are as a conference. Uh, eight members this year, as you mentioned. Most we've ever had in, in Big South football. We continue to look at the growth of Big South football, adding additional teams to the league, and, and we're, we're active in, in taking a look at that. But in terms of the quality of the football, you know, I really feel great about it. Monmouth, what a great job uh, Kevin and his crew have done here. Um, you know, can't say enough about that. Kennesaw, of course, year in and year out, you were just talking about the preseason favorites. But really looking at the rest of the league, I look at a lot of improvement uh, from a lot of the other teams. We've got new ones coming in in Hampton. North Alabama, even though they're not eligible yet, a great team coming into the league. So I'm really encouraged about the quality of football in the Big South. So that's actually an interesting one. Let's talk about that real quick. Hampton is eligible for the league yes. championship. North Alabama is not eligible for the league championship. Right. Tell us why. Well, they're in their transition period from Division II to Division One. It's a five-year period the NCAA requires you to go through. And as a conference, we felt like while we wanted to help North Alabama put them in the conference uh, schedule so that they have opponents, they can build a schedule, we're becoming familiar with them. As a, as a team, but because they're not eligible for the NCAAs, it's really not fair for them to be eligible for the conference championship yet uh, as well. So that's why their games don't count on the standings and they're not eligible for our championship, but we want to embrace them as a future member of the Big South. 150th year of college football, the anniversary of one of the best sports uh, in the country. Do you have a favorite memory? I mean, prop, not yeah. even maybe Big South related, well, just overall. What, yeah, what, strikes, it, what strikes the mind? Isn't it fun to see all the highlights coming out over the 150 years of football? A lot of great highlights, certainly in the Big South in terms of our first AQ, our first wins in the playoffs, multiple teams in the playoffs. But I got to go back a little bit further in my previous life as an administrator at the University of Washington in 1990-91, where we won the national championship under Don James and the great teams they had back then. Mark Brunel, Billy Joe Hobart, Steve Entman. Uh, was, it, was it just one of those fairy tale years that we had at the University of Washington? Always appreciate you coming by. That's a good one, by the way. I wouldn't have known that about you unless you threw that in there. Uh, Kyle Kalander, the commissioner, giving us some time. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we've got stats and highlights for you. Mammoth right now with the 21-14 lead over Albany.
back here at Monmouth University in West Long Branch, New Jersey with Eddie Acapinti, I'm Matt Harmon. We're still at the half and it's still that Monmouth seven point advantage partner, 21-14. Some of the numbers uh, almost even in terms of total yards offensively. Albany got most of theirs pretty late on just a couple of drives. Yeah, those last two drives, this was 21-0 Monmouth and then two long drives with a couple of big plays. The reason why this is now a one score game. You could see Albany, Matt, kind of a flip flop from how they've done their damage all season, more so through the air now than on the ground. 11 first downs for the Great Danes, 14 for Mammoth. time of possession, 18 to 12, uh, just about. Let's take a look at some of the highlights in the first half. Teams had good stuff on both ways. Yeah, it started well. We saw a first half that begun as a defensive struggle. Pete Guerrero getting Monmouth on the scoreboard. That made it 7-0. And then Monmouth forcing a turnover. They ultimately led 21-0 after forcing consecutive turnovers. But then in that half, what you saw was big plays. Kenji Bahar finding Terrence Green. And then Jeff Undercuffler in Albany started to wake up. He had a couple of long touchdowns in that first half to Jawan Green. The interception of Bahar set up another score. And after all that, what we have is 21-14 Mammoth and a really close game. Bring it back for the second half. For the best in Big South coverage, visit BigSouthSports.com. Stay current with the latest news, results, stat standings, and much more. Enjoy video features showcasing remarkable student athletes or connect to your school sites or social media outlets all from one place. Remember, the source for all your conference information is BigSouthSports.com. 
Welcome back here. Good second half with Think coming on tap as Monmouth enjoyed a 21-0 advantage before Albany put up the last 14 points of the first half. And as Kenji Bohar roams the sideline a little bit, his numbers 8 of 20 for 118 yards had a couple of uh, long passes, one to Joey on the rally, the big touchdown uh, going to Terrence Green Jr. But really credit the youngster Jeff Undercuffler uh, able to keep Albany in the football game, went 11 of 20, has the two touchdowns. His favorite target so far in the day has been Jawan Green. The two big plays over the top as we get the second half up now and going. It'll be Donovan McDonald from inside the five-yard line, and he's tripped up before he can get his way uh, to the 25. Good open field tackle made by Davis Smith in coverage. Albany going to Matt try and take this momentum after those two scores to end the first half. You know, they get on the board here, makes this game totally different. The the whole tenor of this game changed. You know, there was another late flag. I, I again didn't see it. That's the second time I can recall a penalty without seeing laundry on the field. But the whole tenor of this game changed on that. Shotgun draw for Albany to Carl Mofer deep in their own territory late in the first. He breaks it for about 50 yards or so, and then that set up the long play to Jeff Und or from Jeff Undercuffler to, as you said, his favorite target today, the big play guy, Jawan Green. Back inside the 15, Albany will start with it at their 11. Undercuffler wants to throw, long throw across the field. It is hauled in by Jawan Green. They'll mark him around the 17. Green has to come off. You can see him holding his shoe in his left hand. Kind of broke through an ankle tackle from Eddie Morales, but while Morales got part of Green on the ground, he got the shoe off. So now the big play guy, after coming up with his fifth grab for Albany, has to come out. West Nesky in motion. Pitch going to the far side. James around right end, dragging Anthony Budd out of bounds, who will make the tackle. It will give Albany a first down, gain of about six. Get the momentum going, formation right. Nice block on the outside. It was the tight end, Wisniewski. That uh, cleared things up, sealed the outside in the first down run. Albany coming out here, taking their time offensively. Three receiver set with an H back to the right as well. Undercuffler wants to throw. They're keeping it pretty simple for him. He's got Jarrah Reeves off to the far sideline. Well, but what's the theme right now is that Undercuffler is being protected in that pocket. He's allowed to stand tall and strong. The Albany offensive line is doing an excellent job keeping him clean outside of that sack fumble in the first half. They've been pretty sound in this game. <laughs> Timeout has been taken down on the field from our referee, who is Edwin Lee today. They had an issue with the chain. I believe Reeves tripped over the chains going to the far side, so they had to get reorganized. Reeves will go in the slot, the near side of your picture. Green back in as a receiver as well. It's Green to make the catch. Right around the 30, gets upfield. Stepped out close to the 40. Another first down, gain of about 10. It just looks easy right now for Albany. Just kind of easy pitch and catch. Flipping it around. And I think that late score really took a lot of the momentum that Monmouth had and you know, kind of zapped it, Matt. It's a pretty, pretty kind of quiet, dull feeling right now, isn't it? 
Would agree. First three minutes of this second half. Play action for Undercuffler. He's got another receiver, and it's Jawan Green again, and it's going to be another first down. There's not anything fancy about what Albany's doing. You can almost make the argument it's dink and dunk down the field, but that is working right now for the Great Danes. Well, and you can do that when you've proven that you can make big plays in the passing game. You know, they're Two scores have been big plays in the air, so now they're beating Mammoth underneath. Right at midfield. Another quick throw, and that's another reception for Juwan Green. Now also, because of those big plays, we've seen Albany get behind Mammoth, so now it looks like more kind of zone, umbrella coverage for Mammoth on that back end where they're content to let completions happen in front of them. And Jeff Undercuffler is just surgically moving Albany down the field. 15 of 24 on the day. Four straight completions, two to Green, two to Reeves. Press coverage on one side. Corner blitz coming. Undercuffler did not see him. Ball popping out. It is recovered by Albany. Corner blitz set up. It was Eddie Morales who was in press coverage, and he shot right out of a cannon. He's going to come from the top of the screen and just untouched. Beautifully called by Andy Bobick, the Monmouth defensive coordinator. And Albany was fortunate to have it fall to Mofer. They will actually reverse that and call it an incomplete pass. So it will go back to the line of scrimmage. The running back, Carl Mofer, was there. And right at the last second, Undercoupler did kind of flick it in his direction. I'd want to see that again. Was that a, a tuck rule situation? Undercoupler throwing. Has green again. Jawan Green right now having a field day within the Mama secondary. That's his eighth catch of the afternoon. Well, this is the play two plays ago, and Morales comes untouched. Let's see. So we, what we don't see is, I guess, what was called a little flick forward because the offensive lineman was, was blocking our vantage point. But that's a heads-up play by the quarterback. Penalty come on Casey Desir. Back up offensive lineman. Back Albany up five yards. Right now the Great Danes trying to make it 20 straight with a potential extra point to tie it. They have been able to go right down the field on Mammoth on this opening drive. We've seen go a lot short and underneath. You know, the first half they were stretching the field vertically with a lot of their routes, but now they've kind of developed, Matt, more of that short rhythm passing game, and they are near the red zone. From the shotgun to the end zone again. This one is batted away. Good defensive play by Terry. The intended target was Jera Reeves. That was a, a better job by Terry, who has a pick in this game of playing the ball. In a spot similar to this, he gave up a touchdown. Here, locates ball, both hand fighting, and able to knock it away with his off arm, maybe get a finger on it, but that's what you need to do in pass coverage. You need to be a distraction enough where you don't allow a clean catch. Second now and 15. Look ahead a little bit. You wonder if this could be four down territory for Albany, if needed. Into the belly of Carl Mofer. And he'll get down Mofer will to the 15 yard line. Gain of eight. Nice run, but because of the second and 15, it's third and sizable here. Could be four down territory. Ball resting on the 15. I wouldn't be shocked if Albany kept it on the ground here with inside of 10 minutes to go. Third and a long six. Undercuffler has plenty of time, goes over the middle, has a man inside the five yard line, catches made down to the two. How about the start of the quarter?
for Jawan Green, who had four catches going into this third quarter. He's got five already in the third for nine on the day. Well, and this one's a tough catch in traffic, going up and making the play. Yeah, Green, not the tallest. He's only six foot tall, but on that catch, he looked about six foot five going over the middle and making the third down grab. Single back, tight formation. Mo four touchdown. Albany going right down the field. How about a 12-play drive that started with the beginning of the quarter and takes up just about six minutes. And, and there's textbook. Not only that, there is a Mammoth defender down right there. It's. Kahari Scarlett, who is down and injured on the play. And Matt, not only is it just the first score here of the second half, it's the third straight touchdown for Albany, and they have come alive. Since falling behind 21-0, this score from Carl Mofer is now their third consecutive. Great blocking. That is just how you get it done up front on the touchdown. Scarlett continuing to be tended to. I guess we have a late developing shootout on our hands, partner. 9.03 to go in the third quarter. You look at how Albany got down the field on that last drive. They had six first downs, seven pass completions on nine attempts, just three rushes. Well, we've seen them exploit Mammoth in the secondary with big plays. That one was more... I don't want to say it was dink and dunk, but you know what it was? It was just con a controlled passing game right down the field. Seven, eight yards at a shot. All important extra point coming for Dylan Burns. Two of two so far on the day. Make it three of three, and we've got ourselves back to level terms. Albany 21, Mammoth 21. Mammoth got in front, 21-0 partner. Albany goes right down the field, 89 yards and 12 plays. Green, a huge target on that drive. And then Mofer coming on as this game wears on, and we got a brand new game, 21-all. I want it. I can't believe it. The cow brought his karaoke machine. No. I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it. GEICO could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Boom, boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bon boy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work, day in and day out, to take a step forward towards the Greeks, championships, our goals, excellence on every level. 11 schools, more than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. 
Get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. You can also follow the conference source for game updates and on-site championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South. Well, Albany made that one look pretty easy. 12 plays, 89 yards for the touchdown, 552 off the clock. It is 21-21 with the Great Danes and Monmouth, who will get it for the first time in this third quarter. End over end kick. Returnable for Monmouth. Brandon Batts over the 20. Falling down around the 22-yard line. First time in this game that now Monmouth will have to, Matt, have a drive since scoring where they don't have a lead. And Kenji Bahar in that first half was 8 of 20 for 118 yards. Score and a pick. The star of the half for Monmouth was Pete Guerrero. Had 103 yards and a touchdown. And Albany right now with renewed life. So this yeah. is a big drive both ways. All the momentum certainly for the Great Danes. Guerrero tackled from the backside. Ball popping out. They will say that Guerrero was down. Just about back to the line of scrimmage. Well, let's see. The play's going to start right now, come left, and Guerrero indeed was down. Good Pretty tackle. clear. Good tackle made by Jaron Williams, who came on a corner blitz. Bahar from the shotgun. Reverse set up. It's Lonnie Moore, the fourth. Slips one tackle. He'll have a first down off the left side. Good job by Moore. Throwing it into a couple of extra gears along the way. A nice job also. Watch Kenji Bahar, the quarterback, in front of this play. He does just enough to get in. Yeah, he just get a piece. That's all he had to do to spring Moore. Big play again for Mammoth. This one on the quick reception for Alderelli, who's having himself a good day. That's his fifth, his fifth catch. Flag out. Just an odd play. Didn't seem like anyone really was set. Bahar threw left to two receivers who were looking at him. So that'll set Monmouth back five yards on first down. Alderelli now five catches, 71 yards after that big play before the penalty. First and 15. Quick throw to the outside. Guerrero in that wide receiver spot again, making players miss. And has Mammoth the first down, wrapped up around the 25-yard line. Eddie, we said little wrinkle in the Mammoth attack today, splitting Guerrero out a couple times. He had a 13-yard reception in the first half, and he gets another big play here. Yeah, Mammoth getting their playmaker of the football in a variety of ways. This time running into the middle of the line, hit and dropped by Nick Dillon. Transfer out of Eastern Michigan. No gain on the play, brings up second and 10. Guerrero out, Romeo Holden will come back in. We have not seen a ton today of Devell Jones as the second running back. No, just a couple of carries in the first half. Holden has touched it twice. Make it three times. Best carry for him today. We'll get him about five, stop just shy of the 20-yard line. Good answer to the Albany score for Monmouth. They've methodically moved downfield, but now a big play at third down and six. And to keep this drive going, stop that 21-point scoring streak from Albany. Monmouth will need a, a pretty big play here, partner.
Bohar has two receivers to his left. Puts Clark in motion. On the ground, it's Holden. Mammoth showing faith in their running game. Holden will take it down inside the 20, get to the 19, maybe close to the 18. That would indicate, Eddie, that Mammoth was thinking this is four down territory all the way. I would agree. You know, they're into the win, but Mascara was good from 40 plus into this win, but now you have faith in what you do. This is the kind of call that you make at fourth and three. Guerrero comes back in. Snap will come at the 18. Mammoth basically has to get to the 15. It's a short three. Three wide into the game, two left, one right. Bahar, blitz coming, throws the fade into the end zone. Touchdown, Lonnie Moore, the fourth. Six on the board for Mammoth. What a throw and a happy coach's booth for Mammoth. That what might have been the best throw for Kenji Bahar all day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry that up a bit, partner. I, I'm going to say it was the best call, gutsiest call, and best throw of the day for the Mammoth quarterback in the face of pressure to make that throw in that spot that's big time. Extra point is good. Mammoth after 21 straight for Albany. After to get back on the board to take the lead again. The fade over the top. Lonnie Moore, the fourth, goes for six. Eddie, you've been calling for it all day. This is normally the favorite target for Kenji Bohar. Got to find a way to get Lonnie Moore involved with the game. And if you're Monmouth, what better time than on a fourth down conversion into the end zone? That's a great throw from Kenji Bohar. And the hard work for Moore was done at the top of that play. When you win at the line of scrimmage, he's not the biggest guy, about six foot, but he gets through on that fade route into the end zone. The faith that the coaches show and the faith that the quarterback shows in making that play and that throw is big. Mamet stops that three touchdown scoring run from Albany. McDonald back deep. He's been the main return guy for Albany. This is a bit of an onside kick. Albany will cover it. It was half pooch, half onside. Great Danes have number 89, Thomas Greeny, back up tight end. Fall on it. A short field to work with here for Albany. They'll have it at their own 41. 
And after a slow start for them offensively, it's been a very impressive afternoon for the redshirt freshman quarterback, Jeff Undercoupler. Our, our referee friend's having a can you hear me now problem on the field. Albany football <laughs> with 5.21 to go in the third. 21 straight for Monmouth to begin the game. 21 straight for Albany to tie it. Hawks with that latest drive to go back up top. Matt, you know what the definition of insanity is, right? I mean, the same thing over and over. Game after game, year after year. You would think the referees would talk to each other. Hey, when you get to Monmouth, watch out for the crowd, Mike. Gain of only a yard. Second and nine now coming. Good play inside made by Nick Shoemaker, who was shaken up earlier in the day. Play clock to seven. Ball deflected in the air. The big paw of Nick Almer, the junior, 6'3", 260. Well, that is, and every defensive line coach in the country will tell you that is as good as a sack. And that play to get your arm up and bat a pass down, under Cuffler, six foot five. That's not easy to do. It's a big third down coming, third and nine. On the day, Albany three of six on third down conversions. Three down linemen across the interior for Monmouth. Showing blitz, here they come. They'll bring seven, screen set up underneath. Good open field tackle made by Terry. Jarrah Reeves will make the catch but go for no gain. You know, Monmouth brought their pass rush unit in. They took all the big bodies off. The down linemen there were linebackers and Matt, Eric Massey and company, and they got heat on Undercuffler in a hurry. And what it's done defensively and what that's supposed to look like is that sure tackle by Justin Terry in the secondary. Morales back deep waiting for the punt of Mitchell. Wobbly kick, Morales will come up and Call for and make a fair catch at the Mammoth 27 yard line. Hawks will try and build on their touchdown drive when we come back after a timeout. Under four to go here in the third. Mammoth up by seven.
This Big South Network broadcast is brought to you in part by GEICO. Big South alumni can save even more with an alumni discount from GEICO. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. And by Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. And by Sunbelt Rentals, we have equipment for that. With Eddie Acapinti and our entire crew here in West Long Branch, New Jersey, I'm Matt Harmon. Hope you're enjoying your football Saturday. We've seen a good one between two former conference rivals. These teams traded shots in the days of the Northeast Conference where both were there. Albany now members of the Colonial, Mammoth the Big South. Hawks lead by seven. Another catch made by Joey Alderelli. He's got his seventh, uh, sixth rather, of the day. Slowly kind of becoming a go-to target for Kenji Bahar, who we've seen spread it around a bit in this game. Only guys with multiple grabs, though, were Alderelli and the running back, Pete Guerrero. Alderelli had a career-high seven in the opening day loss out at Western Michigan. Flip to Lonnie Moore. He'll get to the 30. Another third down. I think we're going to say this a lot in the back stretch of this game. A key third down. Mammoth has not been good on third downs today. Going into this play on third and seven, three of 12. It doesn't seem like that, that they have struggled on third down with how well they've done offensively. But this is a big play here at third and seven. Play clock to five, Bahar the snap, the throw, and a good catch made. Extended arms by Terrence Green, who right at the yard marker, a step over, will move the sticks for the Hawks. Well, that is a big time grab by Terrence Green. Look how strong he is with the hands and holding it away from the defensive back. Go back to that number, the three of 12, now four of 13. Maybe a little misleading because Mammoth is three of three on fourth down conversions. Green near sideline, hops a tackler and Jaron Williams goes inside of Albany territory, knocked down around the 44 yard line. Well, he made a lot out of a play that initially didn't look like it was going to be a big play. And how about that athletic finish? The give to Guerrero who runs into a wall of white off on the left side. Robert Lockman on the tackle. Bahar flips it over to Green as an afterthought, and then he literally hurdles Jaron Williams. How about that play from Green? Second and 12. Under two to go in this third quarter. Bahar, strong throw, but off target as he wanted Alderelli. That's the first incompletion for Bahar on this drive. Now four out of five. They've run it just one time, and now third and long. You figure, you got to go to the air again. Converting one third down already on this drive. Third and 12, Bahar goes underneath for Guerrero. Not much to work with, pretty good coverage from D'Amico, the outside linebacker. And I tried to put this in front of P. Guerrero and let him run with it, just it's a touch behind him. And that slowed him up just enough, but D'Amico was right there and the Albany defense comes up with a stop. They answer Mammoth's stop with one of their own is now ending or at least winding down here in the third quarter. Matt, this has been a really good football game since Mammoth jumped in front 21-0 in that Albany comeback, Mammoth with an answer. We're gonna have a finish here in the fourth. McCreary to punt. Steps into it, wobbly kick, bouncing around the five, but then going in and out of the back of the end zone. The ball had a ton of spin on it and couldn't tell where it was and then it lands and. When you see it do that, you know it's got a lot of top spin as it goes into the end zone. Mom 
Monmouth next week will have another non-conference game. They'll be on the road in Montana. Certainly the Hawks trying to mix the schedule around a little bit this year. Patriot League last week in Lafayette. CAA this week in Albany. Montana, the big sky next week, and then they wrap up the non-conference with former NEC rival Wagner. That after a bye week in the back of September. Touches on a little bit of every element, right? You got FBS game, you've got a Patriot League opponent, you've got a CAA opponent, and then you've got uh, you know, the challenge that Montana provides. And I'm looking forward to seeing that atmosphere, partner. Be next Saturday as Monmouth will be back on the road. Won't be back home until October 12th. And that factors in the trip, a bye week, road game at Wagner, and then back home. That catch made for Jawan Green, who's having himself a day. He's got 10 catches for 100 and uh, make it 11 catches, excuse me, for 189 yards and two touchdowns. That wraps up the third. We will go to the fourth with the game still in the balance. Mammoth 28, Mammoth, uh, Mammoth 28, Albany 21. We've had some scoring here in a back and forth third quarter. It was Albany on the board first with a touchdown run for Carl Mofor. That tied it at 21. Credit Eddie Mammoth to come back down and score this one to Lonnie Moore the fourth. On a fourth down conversion, no less, and a big time throw by Kenji Bahar as we throw our fours up, partner, ready for what should be an exciting fourth quarter. 
Look at the Mammoth sideline. It'll be Albany footballs. We return back here. It is second and four for the Great Danes. They have it at their own 36 yard line. Mo for 90 yards on the day. Jawan Green close to 200 yards receiving and another quarter of which to work with. He will with that reception go over 200 yards. He needed 11, looks like he's gonna get 12 on his 12th catch. Well, it's pretty safe to say that Jeff Undercoupler has found a receiver that he is confident in. And Jawan Green is having himself an afternoon. First down and 10. From the shotgun is Undercoupler. Moves his shoulders to the left, lets it go. This is intercepted. Anthony Budd playing that free safety spot the way you're supposed to, just hang in center field and wait. And he's got his second interception in as many weeks. Well, he kind of baited Jeff Undercoupler into that throw, didn't he? Bud gave the appearance that the receiver was open and then he's got great range from that free safety spot. And that window closed in a hurry as Bud gets his second interception in as many weeks. Mammoth winning the turnover battle today. Kenji Bahar, the one interceptions. That's the second for undercoupler. Plus Albany fumbling it a couple of times as well. Bahar from his 11 yard line. Hands off to Guerrero who gets just a yard. You don't often see an Albany team commit four turnovers in a game. And Monmouth has won that battle here, Matt. They're plus three in this game. Party, or part of the reason that they've got that touchdown lead. Bahar wants to throw, lets it fly middle of the field, deflected away by Jaron Williams, who almost deflected it to a Mammoth receiver. Well, both Joey Alderelli and Lonnie Moore were running the same route on opposite sides of the field. And they literally ran that post route from two sides, which is why they're literally converging. And Moore, if he was a yard or two further back from where he was, might have had something spectacular going. One of the few times Mammoth has really stretched the field vertically in this game. Third and nine. Four receivers. Inside ball for Guerrero. Trying to get to the 20, and as he turns up field, that one last move will get Mama the first down. That was just tremendous individual effort from Pete Guerrero, who is showing the full arsenal in this game. Running the ball, this will go down as a reception, but it literally is a run, and look at the work he does. That little move at the end right there is what got Mama the first down. Two minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. Guerrero starting left, moving right, gets two. That was a big play. You know, if Mamet didn't pick that up, Matt, they have to punt the ball back to Albany. They're probably getting it in decent field position. Instead, it's more time that Kenji Bahar and Mammoth can take off the clock with this one score lead. Bar here wants to throw. Flips it to Lonnie Moore, who makes the catch his third of the day. We'll leave after a six yard pickup, Mammoth with a third and two. And Guerrero comes off the field here on third and short. Holden in. Third 
third and a long two. Holden gets the carry, trying to push the pile forward. Second effort, wait a minute, Albany came away with the football, a strip inside, and it looks like it'll be Great Dane football. Nick Griffin, the redshirt senior, pulling it away and gives Albany second life as they'll have it inside the Mama 35. So they rule that forward progress isn't stopped because right here, no whistle, no whistle. Now, I, all right, I lost the ball, partner. We can't see it at that point. So the ruling was forward progress was not stopped at the fumble. So if we don't see a Romeo Holden knee go down, then it should be Greg Gattuso and Albany football. Let's try to negotiate exactly what we just saw. It'll be really hard to overturn this because of the massive humanity that you'll see on our replay. Holden has it here. Initial hit by Matheny. His knee's not down yet. Still moving the pile forward. Griffin, who's on the back, man, that's going to be a turnover. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that when we saw that 2-6 that on the jersey of Holden sneak through in the bottom of the pile, by then it looks like the ball's already out. Something to... As we'll look at it one more time, this is a different angle. I'm sure Greg Gattuso was wondering, why are we wasting? You'll see Nick Griffin right there. Yeah, he's on top of bodies. He yeah, just that's rips it away. Yeah. What you saw was, that's a great angle there, because you see Holden Matt, we see him kind of backing up, like backpedaling, right, forward. And while he's doing that, it's the second time in this game. Remember what happened to Mofer back in the first half when Daquan Grimes ripped it out, and now... You, you get the play from Griffin, who's been really impressive in this game. And turnovers have definitely played a massive role in this game. Albany football. We don't even have to listen to know that it was going to be Great Dane football. So a little momentum swing as well. Think about the running back position, Eddie, going into the season. Deep and talented. Guerrero, Fari, Devell Jones, Fari we mentioned earlier. Uh, out with an appeal, trying to get back onto the field. Jones a little bit nicked up today, so you've got to go to your fourth running back as Guerrero, I guess, needed a blow on that last play. Holden turns it over, and Albany has a chance to tie it. That's no, Kenji, uh, excuse me, that is uh, Undercuffler into the line on the left side. Six turnovers now in this game. Second and eight. You know, Matt, the six turnovers in this game, you know how many points have been scored off of all six of those? Only six points. So they've played a factor, but not necessarily the factor that you would assume that number of turnovers would create. From the shotgun, under Kepler. He's going to throw to the end zone. He wants his favorite target. Pass interference coming. Won't matter. It's a touchdown. And it's a day for the ages for Jawan Green who's going to have his 13th catch. Yeah, he is he is in a world of pain, holding his right leg. Well, he was pointing to his leg, and he's up, but getting some assistance off the field. But that doesn't matter, partner. What an afternoon. What a throw and a better adjustment and catch. 13th catch, third touchdown. He's gonna have over 200 yards. He is right now the reason why this game is tied. And Undercuffler's had a great game, but w without a target like Green, goodness, what an afternoon for the senior from West Virginia. That time the turnover does come back to haunt one of these two teams. Burns for the extra point. Gets inside the upright, and we are back at 28 aside. 11.02 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's Mama's turn to see if they can get points back on the scoreboard. Albany and the Hawks all tied up.
What a day for the man right in the middle of your picture there. Jawan Green wearing number four. 13 catches, 227 yards, three touchdowns on the day. Mammoth has really had no answer. The former highs for Green. He had seven catches against Richmond last season, 135 yards last season against Towson. Did catch two touchdowns uh, this season, um, the, the most recent being in that opener at Central Michigan. He had 23 catches all of last season. He has 13 this afternoon. Five yard line, Lonnie Moore, 25-30. And the Hawks offense will come back on. Getting about to that stage of the game with 10.54 remaining, you start thinking you better take advantage every time you've got the football because right now defense, in a way, Eddie, has kind of gone out the window. Yeah, I mean, at this point, each team has answered score for score. We've seen some turnovers generated, but that's the only thing that has slowed the offenses down, has been that. And they can kind of move the ball at will a little bit. Guerrero in with Bahar in the backfield. Over the middle, Moore makes the catch, makes a move to midfield. He's ripped down finally by D'Amico. You know, Moore starting to answer Green a bit. Had the touchdown, that's a great throw. In between three Albany defenders from Bahar. Quick throw from Bahar. Terrence Green Jr. makes a catch behind the line. Bahar's pass complete. It's maybe a yard. Runs out of bounds after a short game. Second and nine. Three receivers set. Lohar looks over the top. Wants to throw. Goes right. Catch made by... Green again. Green is complete. Stop by Ten minutes Williams. to go here in the fourth quarter. Mammoth a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, third and one, plus 41. And Guerrero in the game, 21 carries for Guerrero, over 100. He'll get it for the 22nd time, going backwards and stopped. D'Amico and Williams combine on the tackle. John Guerrero just never got started, never got his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. He's running out wide, and you see D'Amico shoots the gap. What a huge play by the linebacker. Looks like Mammoth will go for it here on fourth down. Three of three so far on the day. Bahar waiting for the signals to come in. Better keep an eye on the play clock. Down inside of 10. Hawks need to get to the 40. Movement coming. That's going to cost Albany five yards. Wow. Wow, that's a, that's a mental mistake. Outside, number 31, defense. Oh, that's all you, Matt, all you don't have to do in that scenario is jump. I'm not even 100% sure Mammoth was going to run a play. Isaiah Watson, the outside linebacker, flagged for the infraction. Yeah, partner, we talked about this last week. If this is a couple years ago, he's allowed to get back. And the way it's played and the way it's called today is just different. And that's why Mammoth will get a first down via an Albany penalty. Bahar running, takes it over the 35 to the 33 yard line. Alderelli the catch. He'll shake off a tackler, get close to a first down. Alderelli matching a career high now with seven catches. Last time Mammoth beat Albany was in 2006. Up at Albany, 19 to nothing. 
And the other three times that the Hawks had won, which were in consecutive years, three, four, and five, they won by a combined seven points. So another tight game between these two. Usually is how the script goes when Monmouth winds up winning. Bahar floating one into the end zone. Looking, great adjustment on the football. Lonnie Moore, another one. Fifth catch, second touchdown. What a look and what a grab. About halfway through that route for Lonnie Moore, he had a free release at the line of scrimmage and it looked like Kenji Bahar wanted to size him up. There was no jam. So you'll see Bahar's view. Here he knows that Lonnie Moore was running free and he gets behind the defense again. Got over the top of Tyler Carswell, the safety. And now Moore with a monster afternoon as well. What a game between these two. Mascara's extra point makes it a full seven point spread. Just about at the midpoint of this fourth quarter. Stick around, good one at the shore. A very quiet first half has led into an explosive second half. Lonnie Moore, the fourth, partnered with a pair of touchdowns. Part of a three touchdown afternoon for Bahar, and that one was just go get it. And Kenji Bahar threw it out in front of Lonnie Moore, one on one on the outside, and he's able to win and make the play. No catches in the first half, five for 76, and a couple of scores here in the second. Junior from Sicklerville, PA, uh, New Jersey, excuse me, went to Paul the sixth high school. Kickoff coming for Matt and Mascara. This will be returnable for McDonald inside his 10, 20, 25. Hit and dropped around the 28-yard line. So it's Albany's turn as we hit the midpoint here of this fourth quarter, 7.30 remaining. Hey Matt, you know what the, th this game has <laughs> really been all about? It's big plays. Listen to the touchdown score in the distance, right? 26-yard run, 39-yard pass, 60-yard pass, 28-yard pass. Moore had an 18-yarder, looks pedestrian, then a 32-yarder. This has been a game of big plays and turnovers. Teams have combined for about 850 yards of offense. 
under Coupler, wanting to throw. Why not throw it to Jawan Green? It's a smallish gain, but it's his 14th of the day. Tymir Berry is into the game. Stole it right from my thought process as well. The senior captain in the game now, shaking off what was a week-long struggle with some injuries and, and in there now in a huge spot with seven minutes to go and a seven point Mammoth lead. Second down and about five. Undercuffler checks the line. Looks left and right. Play clock to five. Gets the snap. Under pressure, lets it go. Wanting green again. Barry using the sideline as an extra defender. Hawks brought pressure that time. And it maybe rushed under Kepler just a hair. Well, and Green and Barry, who haven't been too acquainted because Tymir Barry hasn't played a lot today because of an injury, but now they're starting to jaw a little bit on the far side. Pressure up the gut on under Kepler from Kurt Almer, and here a huge third down in this one score ball game. Comes the pressure again. Under Kuffler throws off his back foot, deflected down. It'll be incomplete. They wanted Dev Holmes over the middle. Solomon Manning, the former Rutgers transfer, in coverage. Well, the pocket collapses. Massey is bearing down on Under Kuffler. He's got to get rid of it before he wants. Holmes was not ready. Manning there in coverage. And after that go ahead score, Monmouth comes up with a big stop here late in the fourth. On will come the punt team and Joey Mitchell, who's at a quiet half. Wobbly kick, Morales shifting over, calls for, makes a fair catch as he takes himself out of bounds as well. It'll be Mammoth football at their own 36 yard line. And a chance here with 634 remaining. If you are Mammoth and you can get that two touchdown, two score advantage. The fact that really nobody has been able to stop anybody in this half, you feel pretty good. Well, points for Mammoth almost spell the end of the game, but if Albany can go out, get a stop, maybe force another turnover in this game, they've defensively forced a couple, and then it makes things interesting. This right now, partner back and forth, and what a football game. Trips package to the left, run right for Guerrero. Stop just shy of the 40 yard line. Another tacker for, uh, tackle for AJ Missler. It's his 10th tackle of the day. He and Jaron Williams both in double figures in that department. Mammoth being more deliberate now offensively with this touchdown lead late. Second and six, Guerrero shifts off a one, runs forward, should be a first down. That was a big time cut. We said about Devell Jones who made a move earlier a couple years ago, that probably would have been a loss. I'd say the same for Guerrero. A couple years ago on first contact like that, he probably goes down. Well, and maybe Maddie turns into a two-yard gain, but not a first down gain. And that's the development, the growth of Pete Carrera. Stronger in his third year, back on the gridiron, used to what it is to be a running back at the college football ranks. On that carry, it's his 24th of the day. He'll get about five. You can have a lead and you can run the football, Matt, to preserve the game. It, it's huge. And Mammoth's had it the last couple of seasons. And they're starting to develop it now. Last week, the home win over Lafayette here, trying to build off of that against their old rival, a CAA team. Albany trying to get a stop here and get one more chance for Jawan Green and company.
45 yard line. Eddie, you think of it, since this new stadium opened up in 2017, Monmouth has only lost one game. Yeah, it was last year to Kennesaw State. They've been fantastic here at Kessler Stadium. And Bob. they've really turned it into, Matt, a, a friendly confines for themselves with the way they play. And a lot of those games haven't been close. But getting game wins in games like this, close games, is what has separated them here at home. 5-0 in 2017, 5-1 a year ago. The win last week over Lafayette. Trying to make it 2-0. If they can close out Albany. Guerrero on a third and three, stuffed at the line. He made a nice cut earlier. This one, though, that's a tough ask as he kind of puts it right into the belly, and there is Albany to step forward, make a play, and it, around his ankles again was D'Amico. Potentially look for Mammoth to bring this clock all the way down. Albany does have its full complement of timeouts. Shaping up for a finish here, my friend. Just over three remaining. McCreary on to punt. Monmouth was missing a player. And I think the Hawks will take the penalty, just back up five, so give McCreary a little bit more room to work with. McCreary, when he steps into it, should be about his own 40. He'll hang it in the air, wobbly kick again. Bouncing around the 15, goes out around the 13. Well, now you, you set a stage, right? And you see, is it going to be the red shirt freshman? Is it going to be Jeff Undercuffler to lead his team down on a game-tying drive, potentially a chance to win it? Or is Monmouth going to continue its home dominance to get a home win, Matt? And here it is in front of us here, 2.51 to go. Barry will stay on defensively for Monmouth. Five defensive backs into the game. Here's Undercuffler, wanting to throw. Pressured and has to throw it into the turf. That'll bring you a second and 10. Undercuffler's had a clean pocket a lot of today, but not here. It comes inside, Mullen there. Massey Chambers coming in from his safety position. Brings up a second and 10. Obviously, if you're Albany, the guy you've got to try to find is Jawan Green. 14 catches, 233 yards. Green is part of a twins combination to the top of your screen. There's the throw in that direction, and he makes another catch. 15th reception of the day for Jawan Green. That one might have been the best of the day. One-handed grab in traffic. Goodness, Jawan Green. Had been a little nicked up when touching and catching that touchdown. He'll stay out on this play right now. He's just trying to stretch out those lower legs. First and 10 from the Albany 25. On the ground, good hole for Mofor. Off the left side, he'll get nine. Mofor with the carry. Both teams with a full complement of timeouts. Undercuffler looking, two minutes to go. He'll let it fly here. Throws it up for grabs. Intercepted by Bud. Second of the day. 
Anthony Budd with another highlight reel pick. We saw it last week, the athleticism on display here again, the junior from Riverdale, Maryland. It's a flat out phenomenal play. That is a big time play by Anthony Budd. Under Cuffler puts a ton of air under this. Look at all the ground that he covers, goodness. Retreating, making the over the shoulder grab. Anthony Budd, Matt. Three picks in two weeks, put a star next to that one. Thirty-five, twenty-eight. Albany still has three timeouts. But Mammoth here can hold possession. Likely keep it on the ground with Guerrero and pick up their second win. Huge interception by Anthony Budd. As good as Undercuffler has been, he has turned it over three times on the day. For Albany, it's their fifth turnover. Timeout taken by Albany, no game for Guerrero. On his 27th carry of the afternoon. Showing the range. I said it earlier when he made an interception, doing what a free safety's supposed to do, just kind of hang in center field and make a play on the ball. But that's closing speed from Anthony Budd. Three interceptions now on the season. Albany still has time to get the football back. They've got two timeouts remaining. Guerrero up the middle, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10. One forty-one remaining, third down and 10. Good week three matchup for both of these teams. Here's what's coming up for Albany, the team that Monmouth beat last week. The next on the Great Dane schedule, they'll be home for Lafayette, the CAA opener with William & Mary, at Richmond, at Towson, home for Rhode Island. What a grueling schedule once you get into league play. No picnic for Monmouth either next week. They'll be at Montana, who's 2-0 to open up the year, top 25 team by week finish up their non-conference with a local rival in Wagner. League play starting for the Hawks on August 12th when they will be back at home, part of a two-game homestand, Presbyterian on the 12th, Gardner-Webb on the 19th. Bahar on the carry. Well, credit Albany. They did exactly what they needed to do, which was force Mammoth into a three and out. They've used all of their timeouts, but they will have another chance getting the football back. McCreary will come on to punt. See if Albany brings pressure here. I wouldn't think that they would chance a penalty knowing that at minimum they'll get the football back. McCurry wobbly kick again. McDonald 
fair catch right around the 30-yard line. Certainly an opportunity here for Albany. Still plenty of time remaining, minute 27. <laughs> 70 yards to go. Certainly they know they need a touchdown and the extra point to at the minimum force overtime. Under Kuffler, empty backfield. Wings either direction. He's gonna look left. He's gonna throw over the middle, has a man wide open, catches made by Reeves, who falls down at the 45 yard line, pick up of 15. Good start for Albany. Same set, under Kuffler, again going underneath. Mo Four, the catch, open field tackle made by Dewan Cooper. Gain of seven, we're down now inside of a minute. Albany right to the line. Into the flat, catch made by Mo Four. He'll have the first down, wisely steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Albany taking what the defense giving. Three plays, 27 yards into Monmouth territory. Right now with the Hawk 43. This time, other couple will keep somebody in the backfield first and ten three-man rush plenty of time under Cuffler over the middle incomplete looking for Holmes who ran the underneath route brings up second and ten 41 seconds remaining if you're Albany you're kind of in that spot knowing you don't have any timeouts you got to, at this point, probably still think first down first and then worry about the touchdown after that. Empty backfield set again for Undercuffler. Has time, goes to the far sideline, catch made by Reeves, steps out of bounds. Ten yard pickup, they get the first down and stop the clock. Undercuffler on this drive, four of five. He's managed the clock well, has used the sideline well. From the 33 yard line, Undercuffler stepping up, again dumps it over the middle. That's a 13 yard completion. Undercuffler trying to get his team to the line, trying to spike the football. 25 seconds. Stops the clock with 24 seconds. Makes it second and 10. This drive started at the Albany 30 yard line. The redshirt freshman from Burlington, New Jersey. This is the eighth play of the drive. Under Cuffler looking left, fade pattern. Looking for Jawan Green. Berry, great coverage. Sets up third and 10, two chances remaining here for Albany to get into the end zone. Tymere Berry, who's an all-league corner, has not played a lot of football today, but has come in in the fourth quarter to try and help Mammoth anchor this win down.
Monmouth will use a timeout to talk about things defensively. Plenty of time for two plays for Albany, but you wonder if they only get the first down, if they'd have time enough to get to the line and run anything else. You'd almost have to think in this scenario, it's two chances at the end zone. Third and 10 from the 21. You probably have time to get a first down on this play, but that would be about it. Seven point advantage, undercuffler looking, throwing to the end zone. It is incomplete. Albany coaching staff, irate looking for a pass interference. There was a flag thrown it is going to be a hold on Albany. Bodie, number 51, offense. The penalties decline. Mammoth will decline the penalty and force Albany into a fourth and ten. Under Cuffler throwing, there was some contact. Barry did have a little bit of the. Jersey shoulder area of Reeves. So here we go. Fourth and ten. Undercuffer going to roll. Going to throw it up for grabs to the end zone. This is caught by Albany. A heave into the end zone. Coming down with it, the Great Danes. Number 11, Jerry Reeves, out jumped everyone. Decision time here for Greg Gattuso. Do you go for two and look for the win right away? A flag did come out. It's thrown in the end zone. Is a touchdown. That's a play. That's supposed to be like conduct on the five. The offense. We're pulling a player off the pile. Well, this play of a touchdown is on the foot of the year. They're going to look at the touchdown again. I'm not quite sure why. I guess just to make sure Reeves had possession of it. That's a great job by Jerry Reeves, the 6'3 senior. From Pennsylvania, his eighth catch. Holmes with the penalty. The penalty will march it back with the unsportsmanlike. It's not going to be a chip shot for Dylan Burns to tie it. It is a touchdown. Somehow Reeves comes out of that with the football. Now a 35-yard extra point attempt. This to tie it and send it to overtime. High snap, good hold. Kick, moving to the left, but it's good. Albany 35, Mammoth 35. What a drive for Albany. 10 plays, 70 yards down the field. Take what the defense gives you. Reeves, Mo four, Mo four again. Nurse the clock. Good strong throw there again for Reeves. He was the target guy this time around. It was basically a drive back and forth of Mo four and of Reeves. And Reeves there with the touchdown reception. 
Makes it 35 all. We are four seconds away from heading to overtime. This is Burns to kick. Squibs it, goes to back. Lonnie Moore. Moore wrapped up, and that will take us to the end of regulation. Overtime we go to with Albany and Monmouth all tied at 35. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll get you set for extra football here at the shore. Well, we started that way in the beginning of the game, which was a coin toss and now becomes just as important as we go to overtime. Albany with a Hail Mary type play. Not the traditional deep Hail Mary. Let you go on deep end. But it worked. Each team one possession from the 25 yard line until a winner is decided. Everything is untimed. And if we make it to a third OT, teams will have to go for two. Mammoth will go on defense first. Hawks had a big lead in this game. Up 21-0. Albany coming back to tie to 21. Monmouth going up 28-21. Albany tying it again. Monmouth 35-28. Albany with a fantastic drive at the end of the game. Much will be talked about that Hail Mary. But even before that, just great execution of getting down the field with no timeouts. The numbers on the day for the red shirt freshman, Jeff Undercuffler, 31 of 51 for 398 yards.
First play from scrimmage. Play action for Undercuffler. He wants the end zone again. Thrown up, batted away. Terry doing battle with Jawan Green. Green, who's had a career day. 15 catches, 245 yards. Last time ever, it was Reeves who was the top target. Ball popped out. Under Cuffler will fall on it. It's a loss of about two. Mammoth, who won the coin toss, giving Albany the football to start. will know when they get it, barring a defensive play, will know what they need to win it. Movement, Mammoth pointing at Albany, Albany pointing at Mammoth. Side. Go against the Hawks. Defense. Into the neutral zone. Calls the offense to react. Neutral zone in fraction. Third down. Third and 12 now becomes third and seven. Right in the middle. It was the man over the top of the football, Kyle Mullen. Wisely, the center, Nico Cullen, the junior, tapped the helmet of Mullen the penalty to be on Mom. Third and seven. Undercuff throwing. Wants the end zone again. Looking. Holmes makes the over-the-shoulder catch but could not hang on to it. Probably would have been out of bounds anyway. And now it's a decision for Greg Gattuso. He's going to bring his kick team on. Win, which was an issue earlier, has died almost completely. 39 yard attempt, it's hooking, hits the post and comes out. So Mammoth can win it with any kind of points. Dylan Burns, the kicker, gave it a good shot. Watch this. Had the distance. Just pushed it a little bit. Hits the goal post, comes back out. So here's Kenji Bahar, Mama's fifth year senior. Any kind of points, win it with the silver and blue. It's Bahar, quarterback keep. Bahar keeping his feet. See Albany coming in there trying to strip it away. I think for Mammoth, the kicker, Matt Mascara, would rather it be with his right foot on that left hash mark, and you probably saw a good indication of why Bahar ran that way. No need for Mammoth to be greedy. From the 20. Guerrero, he'll run back to the middle of the field. Guerrero's going to have a Mammoth first down to the 14-yard line. Good seal on the edge. The right tackle, Justin Zuba, got just enough. The ball just went from one hash to the other. I 
would think if you're gonna run it, you're gonna put it back into the middle of the field at minimum. Pistol look, Guerrero to the left. Guerrero, good size hole, he'll get about six on the first down carry. Players shaken up, so we'll have a stoppage for just a moment. One of the offensive linemen, Mahmoud Shabana, that will bring Oliver Jervis into the game. Mascara warming up. Right now, looking at Mahmoud Shabana, the 6'4", 280-pound senior from New York City. Here's the last play. The run for Guerrero. You'll see Shabana just kind of rolled up. Nothing, obviously, that anyone could have done about it. Second and four is where we are at right now. Obviously, Mammoth would love to just get the touchdown, not have to worry about anything kick-related, and celebrate this win. Other than Bahar or Guerrero, would be hard-pressed to think that anybody's going to have their hands on the football. Instead on second and four, it'll be Matt Mascara, which leaves room for error just in case there's a bobbled snap or any kind of issue. Mascara will come on and try and win it. Two field goals today. A 47 and a 21 yarder. Timeout taken by Albany trying to as they would say ice the kicker with the two today Mascara in his career 15 of 19 he's been about automatic with extra points and this a little bit longer about five yards longer than a normal extra point that's the one timeout for Albany that they can use. Each team gets one per set of downs. Mascara coming back on here. The long snapper is number 66, Kent Vines. The holder is the punter, Colin McCreary. This to win it. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. Game set match, Mammoth. Hawks go to two and one, the game winner. For the senior kicker, Matt Mascara. Final score, 38-35 in overtime. Time conference rivals get back together. Albany sees a seven game win streak against Monmouth come to a close. Hawks probably, in a lot of ways, you could say, make it a little bit harder than it needed to be. There's the booth cam. And there's a win for Monmouth. Thank you for your attendance at today's game. Make sure to visit MammothHawks.com for complete Hawks game coverage. We thank you for your support. Please drive home safely. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. The Hawks win it in overtime.
25-yard field goal in the first overtime for Matt Mascara. Here's a look at the final numbers. Tons of offense between these two teams. Kenji Bahar, 23 of 37, 291, the three touchdowns. How about the day for Jawan Green? 15 receptions, 245 yards, three scores. Anthony Budd, the two big interceptions to go along with five tackles. These teams combining for just under 1,000 yards. Down to the field we go. We we're going to have Matt Mascara, but he wants to go over and lead the Mammoth fight song. Down to the field we go. Eddie Acapinti with head coach Kevin Callahan. Well, Matt, thank you very much. Here with head coach Kevin Callahan. Coach, you can catch your breath just a little bit now after typical Mammoth Albany, right? It's another war goes all the way to the end. What was going through your mind when they hit the Hail Mary play late? Well, you know, first of all, I, I thought we had some guys in position that could have made a play on it, to be very honest with you. And, uh, when their, came, their guy came down to the ball, I knew we were going to overtime and said, you know, hopefully we can go on defense first, get the stop, and then go out and, and score what we need to do. So, uh, you know, very happy with the way our guys hung in there and played. And, you know, our motto for the day was stay tough for longer. And, and I think our guys toughed it out right to the very end. Well, you mentioned it. This game, peaks and valleys, big plays. You jump in front, 21 nothing. That seems like forever ago with all of the kind of twists and turns of this game. Right, it was. And, uh, you know, at 21 nothing, I thought we were in pretty good shape. And then, you know, they hit a couple of big plays, a long run, a couple of long passes over the top where, you know, we're, quite frankly, we got to do a better job in some of our deep pass coverage. Uh, but, you know, we came back from that. We came out the second half, and I thought we reestablished ourselves, and then they hit the Hail Mary at the end. So, you know, when you go to overtime, you just hope that, you know, you put your best football on the line, and, and we did, and, and we got a break when he hit the upright. A few guys that really stood out in this one, Pete Carrero all game, Lonnie Moore second half, Kenji Bahar, Matt Mascara, who we'll talk to. Hard to pick a guy that really pushed you over the top, your impression. Well, you know, had so many really good performances, and, you know, and the defense, although they had a lot of yards, you turn them over five times. You know, you turn a team over five times, you know, you, you think you're going to be in pretty good shape. But, uh, you know, hey, to their credit, they just kept coming back and putting points on the board. But, but our guys hung in there. We were tougher longer. Coach 2-0 in overtime games here at Kessler Stadium. Congratulations. We'll take it. Thank you, Eddie. That's head coach Kevin Callahan joining me. Coach, again, thank you. As we will welcome in one of the heroes that Coach and I just talked about, and it's Matt Mascara, who uh, goes and ends this wild game, Matt and company, with a, a winning field goal. And, Matt, when you get called upon after what had transpired to get out there and kick the game winner, what's going through your mind? Uh, just thinking about how hard I worked all summer, how much faith I had in all the guys up front to block for me, and just, just make sure, like, it's another kick. Just go through my normal routine, and everything will be fine. You know, you were, I was down here next to you waiting to get on the field, and th this game had peaks, it had valleys, it had Albany hitting a Hail Mary late. What does a win like this say about the resolve and the what this team is made of on the inside? It means a lot, man. We were up early. They, they Credit to them. They fought hard. They came back. But, you know, we didn't let it, let it get us down. We just kept fighting and kept fighting, kept scrapping. Coach Cal said it was going to be a, a tough, tough fight all the way through, and it was, and we just kept fighting. Well, Matt, congratulations on the win. Go celebrate with your teammates. Thanks. That's Matt Mascara and Kevin Callahan. Partner, I'll send it back to you after a thrilling 38-35 Mammoth win in overtime. A game with a lot of little twists and turns, as you would think any game that goes 38-35 that goes to overtime would. Big performances all the way around. Undercuffler, Mofor, Green, Reeves on the Albany side for Mammoth. Bahar close to 300 yards. Guerrero over 100 yards on the day. Alderelli matching a career high with seven receptions and the game-winning kick, a three-for-three three day for the senior, Matt Muscara. For all of us here at the Jersey Shore, our entire crew, and my partner, Eddie Acapinti, this is Matt Harmon. We say so long. Hawks win it, 38-35 over Albany. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, an overtime game winner for number 17, Mama 38, Albany 35. Have a great rest of your football weekend.
Uh, nothing in the forecast for potential rain. Good throw over the middle, and it's hauled in by Alderelli. That's the strong arm, Eddie, of Kenji Bahar. He can, when he's sharp, put it on a dime. Well, when he Ground. It's Guerrero. Good cut back at the point of attack. Stays near the hash mark and gets Mammoth the first down into Albany territory at the Great Dane Fort. turns and runs, and he can do that well, and he picks a spot. Guerrero inside the 10, inside the five, untouched into the end zone for Pete Guerrero, who's got his third rushing touchdown of the year. The big play capability of the Mammoth offense on full display. You get Bahar on the escape, you get Guerrero up the middle. Some really good teams in the league as well. Third and two. Bahar moving left. He's got the first down and more. There's Bahar at the 30. Alex not to slide. Finally tripped up. Gets Mom at the first down. Stays in, and Undercoupler wants to go downtown again. Fumbles the football. Mamet has it. The strip on the backside for the Hawks. It was Dewan Cooper with the strip, and Kurt Almer falling on the football. from just outside the goal line for Donovan McDonald who gets greeted inside the 10. What a great
and he goes to the Hall of Fame. You can do it on special teams. Coaches love it. Albany here on first down. Ball popped out again. Still free. Mammoth says they will fall on it, and I believe they do. Hawks football. Hussein moves to the right. This is the give, not even close for Mofor. Not even close. Play action, Bahar has all day to throw. Has a man open in the end zone, touchdown, Mammoth. Terrence Green Jr. from downtown. A 39-yard pitch and catch. Bahar from Bar. by the way. Here is Bahar going for two. Sets it up, has it. Zach Treadway, the junior from Langhorn, PA. All kinds of off. Present two of indeed the strongest leagues. And it leads to bragging rights, right, between the two conferences. Returnable for Lonnie Moore. 15, 20, 25, cut back 30. Open field 40. Has the kicker to beat midfield. Does get upended by Dylan Burns, but a big return for a Moore who had it from right around the five yard line when he started. It really. Undercuff with. Play action. They'll go to the sideline. Interception opportunity, and it's grabbed by Terry, who shakes a tackle at the 10, spins away from another at the 20, gets out over the 25 yard line. Albany taketh and
hole off the right side for Guerrero. Mama's best offensive. Just get a piece. Just get a piece. It's all he had to do to spring more. Big play again for Mammoth. This one on the quick reception for Alderelli, who's having himself a good day. That's his fifth, his fifth catch. Two left, one right. Two left, one right. Bahar, blitz coming, throws the fade into the end zone. Touchdown, Lonnie Moore, the fourth. Six on the board for Mammoth. What a throw and a happy coach's booth for Mammoth. That white. Deflected in the air, the big paw of Nick Almer, the junior. Play clock to five, Bahar. Play clock to five, Bahar the snap, the throw, and a good catch made. Extended arms by Terrence Green, who right at the... because Mammoth is three of three on fourth down conversions. Green near sideline, hops a tackler in Jaron Williams, goes inside of Albany territory, knocked down around. From the shotgun is undercoupler. Moves his shoulders to the left, lets it go. This is intercepted. 
Anthony Budd playing that free safety spot the way you're supposed to, just hang in center field and wait. And he's got his second interception in as many weeks. Usually is how the script goes when Mammoth winds up winning. Bahar floating one into the end zone, looking. Great adjustment on the football. Lonnie Moore, another one. Fifth catch, second touchdown. They're looking. Two minutes to go. He'll let it fly here. Throws it up for grabs. Intercepted by Bud. Second of the day. Anthony Bud with another highlight reel pick. 
We saw it last. This to win it. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. Game set match, Mammoth. Hawks go to two and one, the game winner. For the senior kicker, Matt Mascara. Final score, 38-35 in overtime. This to win it. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. Game. Try and set the edge. now emptied out. It's here with two. to the mom at single back
create from the shotgun under Kepler. He's going to throw to the end zone. He wants his face. Under 